All right, guys, uh, welcome to another stream. Uh, tonight, we're going to be doing another variety stream on the Mr. FPGA. Uh, not really going to explain what the Mr. is because I got a bunch of streams where I do, and I totally just plugged my speakers into the wrong port. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to play Master System games on the Mr. We did a NES stream uh, just the other night. Doing basically the same thing. Sorry guys, just trying to get my headphones situated here. But yeah, uh, I think we're going to start with Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, this is, you know, this game came out on Master System and Game Gear. Basically the same game, except the Master System. Uh, Master System has a higher resolution than the Game Gear, and so it can display more on screen at once. Which is quite nice, but they're both basically the same game. Uh, but yeah, we're going to start off with Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, really cool game, very unique compared to the original Genesis game. Uh, it's not nearly as fast. There's a lot more deliberate platforming and whatnot where you kind of have to slow down. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's kind of its own unique thing and it's really cool. I've always enjoyed the first and second Sonic the Hedgehog actually on Master System uh, and Game Gear. So yeah, we're going to start off with this. So welcome everyone to the stream. I'm your host, Austin. <laughs> and you saw my cat there, uh, Patchouli. I actually just turned my light off so she's going to be a little bit darker. but. Yeah, she's, this is Patchouli, uh, that's what her emotes are for. Uh, she's a good girl, sometimes she hangs out with me while I stream. Uh, I haven't had a webcam up recently, um, and my camcorder is in the other room for the pinball rig, but picked up another Razer Kio uh, a few weeks back, and so, you know, we've got ourselves a another 60 FPS cam up there, so I can get the I can get Patchouli back on camera, which is nice. But yeah, I think she's gonna hunker down here, and she's just gonna hang out with me. It's, it's, it's chilly here. On the East Coast, uh, Washington DC area-ish, um, so she'll probably uh, kind of just wrap up in this blanket here and just kind of stay here the whole night, so. But yeah, um, we're going to play ourselves some Sonic the Hedgehog. So again, we are on the Mr. FPGA. I'm using a uh, 8-bit Doe SN30 Pro wired controller for this, just like I did on my NES stream. And I have actually have a, uh, you know, a uh, quick menu I can bring up by pressing start and select. And, uh, you know, I can change the region of the console if I wanted to. I can change, uh, you know, uh, you know, certain mappers, I guess. I can disable them. Uh, there, uh, It does actually support FM sound. So if games support FM sound, uh, we can enable this feature and uh, it'll use that. So, you know, that's pretty cool. And, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of other stuff, aspect ratios, things like that. Uh, we're not going to really mess around with a whole lot. Uh, this core does support Game Gear as well. The Game Gear is basically a master system with the higher color color palette. Um, but uh, yeah, what we're going to do is actually just reset here. And there we go. And what's awesome about playing this on the Mister, you can map the start button or the, the pause button on the console to, um, you know, something else on the controller. So I actually have the pause button on the console uh, on the start button on the 8-bit Doe controller. So yeah, it's, it's very nice. Um, <laughs> Scarlet says, spoiler, Sonic is blue in this game. No, I think he's green. He d he definitely looks green to me. Uh, hey, Vince. Hey, Deadly. Carl. Uh, game Eagle. Saboteur. Hardcore Casual Gaming. Society of Sin. Uh, Flynn Taggart Gaming. And that's it. That's everybody so far. Uh, but yeah, welcome everybody to the stream. Uh... Vince is a Master System stream. Now there's something you don't you don't see every day. Yeah, <laughs> I generally avoid Master System streams because there are people that are still butt hurt thirty plus years later that it did not you know do as well as the NES, and I have a tendency of getting some really bitter Master System fans uh, that have their heads so far up their asses that. It makes me not want to stream Master System, but hopefully we'll have a good stream tonight. You know, I, I love the Master System. Um, you know, it's I, I grew up with this and the NES, and so I got to play both growing up. And then the Master System was one of the first consoles I got when I started collecting games in like the mid night, mid to late nineties. Uh, so I have fond memories of it. Um, there are some games I, I don't really care for, um, but you know, overall it's still got a really fun library, and I especially love the arcade style stuff and stuff like Sonic the Hedgehog here is just like. Top notch. It's just it's uh, really good software. So, but yeah. Hopefully we will uh, have ourselves a fun stream here tonight. Hey, John Evan, welcome back. Zeno Papo, welcome back. And Dasan, how's it going? 
Coffea says, I'm just bitter, I only got to play the games on a Game Gear. Um, John Evans says, have I played the SMS Sonic before? I have, yes, many times. Um, I think I might even have an old variety stream where I, I played it a little bit. Um, Deadly says, me too, he had NES in 85 and SMS in 88, hell yeah. 88 was like a great time for Master System, that's when Sega was like, 87, 88 was when Sega was putting out a lot of like, really, you know, quality games. I think like Fantasy Zone 2 and, you know, stuff like that. Um... Alright, so let's go ahead, that's not me playing by the way, this is just the, uh, the demo. So let's go ahead and jump into it. And I hope I mapped my buttons correctly, I always forget, uh, if button 1 is on the left or if button 1's on the right on, uh, the Master System controller. Although Sonic the Hedgehog is technically just a one-button game. Both buttons do the exact same thing. But, uh, yeah, it's just Sonic the Hedgehog. You do have, uh, variable jump height, as I like to call it. So you just do a light little jump, a uh, light button press, and you can just do a, a small jump. Uh, so I assume all of you guys already know how Sonic the Hedgehog works. That's an invincibility box. Or TV, technically. Those are TVs. Um... But yeah, if you have rings in this game, when you take hit, uh, take a hit, your rings will fall out of you. And, um... You know, so you're basically, uh, invincible... ...until you get hit with no rings. If you, if you get hit while you have no rings, you die. Or if you fall into an endless pit, you also die. Regardless of how many rings you have, so... So Sonic the Hedgehog is, uh, generally a pretty chill kind of game. You know, even the the 16-bit originals are, are pretty chill for the most part. They do have some some difficult moments, but they're not really known for their difficulty or challenge. And this should be the exit. There we go. Hey, Uber Disco. Oh, Desan, that's interesting. You had an NES growing up as opposed to a Master System. Yeah, because SMS was definitely more popular in your region, for sure. That was, like, one of its most successful markets. Um, but yeah, so if you hit a, a certain ring threshold, you can uh, activate the bonus stage. No rings to jump through, like uh, in the original Genesis Sonic the Hedgehog. But you just gotta get to the end uh, before time runs out. You can get yourself, uh, you know, a bunch of extra lives here and things like that. I keep pressing the button like I'm trying to jump, but these are just automatic springs. Here we go. That's uh, gonna award us a continue. So you do have limited continues in this game, and you have to play the bonus stages if you wanna if you wanna get more continues. All right, let me try to rush to the end here. Actually, that's probably the end. Let me collect these rings. I love the music in this game, too. It's very catchy, very memorable. Yeah, exactly, Deadly. Yeah, both systems, NES and Master System, felt very different. You know, the hardware inside them was, was very different. So, you know, they're both 8-bit consoles with, you know, similar video output and, and whatnot, and, uh... You know, they, they feel very distinct. And I, I, I really miss game consoles having a distinct feel. Uh, it's one thing that draws me into 8 and 16-bit gaming, even 32-bit gaming, um, is, uh, you know, things weren't so homogenized, you know? Like, you know, things felt different from console to console. Even though they were, you know, you were playing the same kinds of games, uh, you could always, you could always feel like you were playing a Master System as opposed to an NES, you know, it's that sort of thing. Alright, so these TVs right here, these are our, uh, check, checkpoints. So, we definitely want to hit that. And, uh, there are Chaos Emeralds in this game, uh, just like the 16-bit Sonics. And, uh, so we would like to get those. Uh, I don't remember where they all are. And I think I actually went down the wrong, uh... Nope, there it is. Got it. Okay, cool. Oops. Yeah, I always forget you can't do a baby jump there, and you can see that, that dithering. <laughs> Looks a lot much more natural. Uh, on a, uh, old-fashioned CRT with an RF switch box. But we are playing on the Mr. FPGA, uh, it, we're using the HDMI output 
and the HDMI output just makes for razor sharp pixels. And there's all sorts of filters you can apply. You can you can apply, you know, like bilinear style filters and whatnot if you prefer to smooth things out. Uh, there's all sorts of filters. But uh, I always prefer the uh, just, you know, standard razor sharp, you know, emulation uh, style picture. It's uh, what I prefer when I upscale stuff. I like it nice and crisp. And uh, when I get into the mood, I, uh, I have a VGA to component uh, adapter for the Mister, so I can actually run the Mister into my Trinitron televisions, my CRTs. Or I can just, uh, sometimes what I do is I just output via VGA, and I run it into one of my 17-inch uh, my VGA monitor CRT, and it just looks, mm, looks gorgeous on it. I'm still mashing the buttons for some reason. Like, I, I, I'm so used to actually, like, running on the ground and having to actually press it to jump. So I'm just kind of pressing the buttons even though I don't need to. So there we go, we got ourselves another continue. I don't know if we're gonna go through the whole game. Uh, we might, we might not. Some of the, the later levels in the game could be a little aggravating. But, I don't know, we'll see. We will see. There's an extra life. There we go. Got it. So we have seven lives already. Alright, we need to exit. Cool. Uh, Dirt Slurp? Yeah, Mr. like I said, Mr. has a lot of different filters that come with each core. Uh, so yeah, you should have a lot of options for, for filters. Yeah, there, there are scanline filters and things like that. Oh, man. <laughs> Sega, the dithering masters. All right, this is a boss level. And there's actually an extra life down uh, one of those pits. I don't remember which one it is, so I'm not going to bother jumping down there. But yeah, the Game Gear version of the game, because the screen size is so small, you can actually hit Robotnik uh, without him actually having to come down. It's kind of interesting. I really like the Game Gear Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, I actually generally prefer it to the Master System game because there are some, a few more shortcuts like that. Um, but also, the sprites are so big. Um, and, uh, you know, so it gives it a very arcadey kind of feel. In the first Sonic the Hedgehog, the sprites aren't so big to where the game's like completely unplayable or anything. Um, the second Sonic the Hedgehog, it's definitely more of a problem. The sprites are even bigger, it feels like, and so it's actually really hard to see where you're going in Sonic 2 on Game Gear. Well, Sonic 1, I really like playing it on Game Gear. Big chunky sprites. Society says you always put the SMS ahead of NES graphics-wise. Yeah, see, that's that that's a nuanced topic right there. Um, one of the issues with a lot of Master System games is that they're very flat. Uh, while the colors, uh, it, it can display, you know, a higher variety of colors. Um, it, Master System games are generally really flat. You don't usually see a lot of, like, background scrolling and stuff like that. Whereas on NES, there is a lot of that. Um, there's more advanced visual trickery going on on the NES, especially in some of its later titles, like Castlevania 3. You know, so me personally, while I, I prefer the brighter colors of the Master System, uh, the NES just, uh, looks... Uh, to me, a lot of its games are much more impressive looking. Because of, you know, lots of the background effects and stuff like that. Like, this waterfall part looks pretty good, though. And I do like the jungle level in this game. Sonic the Hedgehog is like one of those rare Master System games, though, where like they, they put a lot of work and effort into it, and it it definitely shows. It's one of the unfortunate things about Master System is I did find that you know digging into its library a lot, there are a lot more I think lazy efforts, um, and a lot of attempts at porting games from say the arcade that probably shouldn't have been ported to Master System, <laughs> as opposed to trying to make truly unique software. There are like these conversions of really technologically advanced arcade games that really should not have been attempted on an 8-bit console. Nah, it's weird. But it is what it is, you know? I try not to dwell on it too much. Hey, Sean, welcome back, and Josh. 
John, I haven't finished Order of Ecclesia. Don't remember when is the last time you've beaten the game. Maybe at least a few years ago. Did you have fun with it? Tassan says, yeah, I won't deny. I do prefer the NES graphically. Yeah, for me, it's a case-by-case -case basis. Like, I love how Sonic the Hedgehog looks. I love Fantasy Zone 2. That's one of my favorite games on Master System. Not just from a gameplay standpoint, but visually speaking. It doesn't even do anything real special with backgrounds or anything. It's just very colorful. And they really took advantage of the Master System's, you know, um, better color palette. There are some earlier games, though, that do some, some visual things. Like, I really like uh, Black Belt. We're probably going to play that later tonight, actually, because I just enjoy playing the game. But it's got this, uh, you know, line-scrolling effect that is really effective. And you do see that on some Master System games, but it's not used nearly as much as I feel like it should have been. NES games, like, they really nailed that line-scroll effect on so many games. Uh, especially the later ones. Again, Castlevania 3 is one. Vice Project Doom is another, you know, stuff like that. Ninja Gaiden 3, Ninja... Yeah. Yeah, and that effect was used uh, all the way through the 16-bit generation, too. It's such an effective effect. I really love it. I think another part of it with NES is that, you know, NES could basically be expanded through the cartridge slot. You know, so you, a lot of your later games had, you know, sometime co maybe co-processors or, processors or memory mappers or whatever they do. Uh, you know, special chips in there that, you know, uh, allow the console to do things that it really just can't do out of the box, so... And I don't think Master System games did that, so, you know... Um, but different sets of hardware. Hardcore Casual Gaming says he really likes Ghostbusters on Master System. Yeah, me too. I did a Let's Play of that probably about four, four years ago, maybe. Um, yeah, I really, really enjoy Ghostbusters. We're probably not going to play it tonight, because I don't trust the Ghostbusters theme. <laughs> I've been getting a lot of copyright claims for even, like, stupid 8-bit soundtracks that are... Like, covers of main, you know, real, real-world music. But yeah, no, Ghostbusters is awesome on Master System. It's probably the best version of that, that Ghostbusters game, you know, because that was ported to a bunch of different systems. It was on NES, it was on computers, uh, there's an Atari 2600 version. But I feel like the Master System version is by far the most streamlined, and most colorful, and honestly most playable. Alright, there we go. Just barely made it. Golvelius. Uh, yeah, there, I believe there was Golvelius on Master System, yeah. Pages says, uh... He saw a Doom-like game for Genesis the other day. It was a side-scroller where you get to dual-wield pistols. Uh, how was that a Doom-like game? I'm confused. <laughs> hey, hey, Mike J, what's going on? Welcome back. Yeah, Fantasy Star was his first RPG, or JRPG. Nice. Yeah, none of none of the my friends I knew with Master Systems had Fantasy Star, so I never got to play that... Oops, I never got to play that growing up. So, yeah, for me, it was like Dragon Warrior and Final Fantasy on NES. Those were my first JRPGs. It's probably the best way to do this. Are you serious? <sighs> Good old Master System, gigantic ass hitboxes. <laughs> Let's try this again. Yeah, I don't even think I touched the bullets. I have to be centered, though. Oh! I thought I landed on the platform, but I just skimmed it. Uh, Savitor? Uh, I don't know. I don't have anything planned out. With these variety streams, I don't- I don't usually plan them out. 
I'll basically just end up going through my list a bunch of times and just kind of kind of playing whatever I feel like. All right, so I think it's two more hits. One, two, yep, okay. We got it this time. That's a little tricky. No, Dasan, he's, he's talking a side-scroller. It might be like a new homebrew game or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Water and bats, the two deadliest things in retro games. <laughs> and if it's developed in Europe, you can't forget the, uh... Oh, well, water, technically. I, uh, well, you can't forget the water droplets. <laughs> they fall from ceilings and you die instantly. Yeah. <laughs> we will probably experience some of that tonight. Actually, you know what? We might not. Um, when it comes to my taste in Master System games, I definitely generally prefer, like, Japanese-developed games over, you know, the European stuff. Since the Master System did do pretty well over in Europe, uh, there, was, there was a lot of European-developed games, and, uh... Yeah, my preferences definitely lie with the stuff developed in Japan. Especially the stuff by Sega themselves. They generally put out the highest quality software on the console. Some of the highest quality. There's some, there's some outliers like, uh... You know, like, uh... Oh, Power Strike. Basically, Alesta. By Compile. Right. Yeah, SMS was popular in Brazil for a long time. Um, I don't think that has so much to as I don't think that's as much to do with the fact that like you know they love the master system more so the fact that they can't get stuff down there like <laughs> they <laughs> modern consoles are for like the uber rich. Uh, in Brazil, and it's it's sad, you know. And I think they might even have like huge import taxes and stuff like that. And so they just continue to manufacture like master system clone systems and stuff like that because it's cheap, and you know they don't have to import it. And you know, Tech Toy basically has official distribution rights down in Brazil, so you know they can they can basically do master system until the world ends. <laughs> and then they probably will. <laughs> just because of how things are. Oh, crap. Just because of how things are down there. It really sucks for them. Old Dirty Gamer. Indeed, Compile did make games for the MSX. They made games for a lot of things. A lot of things. All right, let's try this again. Let's just do that. <laughs> That's what I should have done the first time. Uh, here we go. I really like using this 8-bit Doe controller for Master System stuff. It feels really good. I, I have a soft spot for the original Master System controller, but it, its D-pad is not the greatest. It's very easy to do accidental diagonals in 8-way games, and then the buttons feel mushy. They feel really weird, uh, and I, I definitely prefer the snappiness of like an SNES controller or, or NES controller. So playing Master System games with something that's more Nintendo styled is, uh, it feels really good. <laughs> it feels really good, actually. Yeah, when I do uh, Master System stuff on, say, like a flash card, oh, I forgot that the screen doesn't scroll back down. When I do Master System stuff on like a Genesis flash card, uh, you know, uh, sometimes I'll bust out the original Master System controller, but a lot of times I'll just use, like, a Genesis 6-button pad, and it, it also feels really good for Master System games. Yeah, so this isn't really a hard section, you just gotta take your time. Don't try to drop back down. We still have nine lives, by the way. <laughs> Sonic is a cat! He looks like a cat, actually. And his, uh, his little portrait pic down in the bottom left looks more like a cat than anything. Alright, 
Okay, it should almost be there. Yes, I mean, like, this is a, a good example of, like, uh, you know, them putting some effort into the, into the backgrounds. You know, you got that simple water, waterfall effect. And, like, you got... Unfortunately, the, the little white stuff here isn't animating. It would have been really cool if they, they animated that. But, you know, yeah, it's good stuff. Very simple. It actually looks like it's animating when you're just moving quickly, but if you just stare at it, you realize it's not. Probably looks a lot more effective on, like, an old-school CRT. I'm gonna have to start saying old-school CRT because, like, I have a bunch of flat-screen Trinitrons, and even with Composite... What? I guess I had to go to the left. Even with Composite on the Trinitrons, you can still pick out all the pixels. Like, I can still see all the dithering. Uh, it doesn't blend the way that, uh... You know, you would expect from an even older set. Not all CRTs are created equal. <laughs> oh, well, I can't get that. Can't scroll the screen back down. But I do need at least one ring so I don't die to these enemies. Got lots of slow down. All right, to the left. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I actually don't really want to play any bonus stages, because, um... You know, I've already played a few. <laughs> I've got enough lives, got enough continues, I don't really need to, uh... To waste my time on them. They still make CRT? No, they don't make CRTs anymore, but... Uh, they you know, there's different eras of the CRT. And in the 2000s, you know, Sony had their flat-screen Trinitrons. You know. And, um, so those things, like, even with, even with, uh, composite, like, they're still really sharp. Man, I don't know why, but my jump is not registering. Okay. There we go. This is a tricky boss for a lot of people. Well, we'll see what happens. There we go. Got it. Hey, Mark. Yeah, Mark Havener out there. He's actually the one that uh, got me in the Master System back in the day. He was the... Actually, two, two neighbors on my street had a uh, Master System. Yeah, we will definitely play some Alex Kid later tonight, for sure. Although I'm really terrible at the uh, at the first one in particular. Do, 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 do. Always really enjoyed this song too, or this this tune. Drop down here. Jeez, man. I don't have very good control here. Alright. You can actually drown here, so... Gotta be careful. Oops. Wow. I don't know, I frame. Patchouli! Come on, Patchouli! Come back up! Come back up, Patchouli! Come on over this way. Oh, all right, guys, let's give Patchouli attention. Let's give Patchouli attention. Hi, Patchouli. Say hi to everybody, Patchouli. Hey, you. She was just sitting down here, meowing and meowing and meowing and meowing. <laughs> she finally jumped up. 
me, you. Yeah, after the introduction, she actually jumped down. She must have ate, eaten some more food. Yeah, we're bringing the patchy back. Bringing the patchy back. I got another webcam, so it makes it a little more convenient. So she's actually got, uh, we actually have some toys here, which I meant to, <laughs> she, she wants to play with them. Let me, uh, let me open one up. Mm. It's like she knows they're hers. <laughs> hey, Carl, thank you very much for that. For Patchy. Get this one right now, okay? Man, these things are cool. Yeah, you wanna play with it? Woo! There you go. There you go. <laughs> there she goes. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, thanks a lot for that, Carl. Patchouli? She's, a she's terrible at, uh... ...chasing her toys. She doesn't, like, catch them or anything. She just runs past them. After you throw them. Patchouli! Where'd you go? Patchouli! There she is! <laughs> Hi! Welcome back! Welcome back! <laughs> Alright, let me clean up here real quick and we'll continue. I didn't pause the game because I, I have so many lives, it doesn't matter if I even die. Good girl, patchouli. Alright, let's play some Sonic. There she goes. <laughs> oh boy. Oh man, she's killing that toy. I just hear it going. Holy oh shit, she loves these things. She's just going crazy. All right, come on. Come on, Bubble. There we go. You can time over. <laughs> you absolutely can, Game Eagle. Why do you think there's a timer? <laughs> oh, crap. I'm dead again? Oh, I got lucky. Okay. Oh, I'm probably gonna die now that I think about it. Let's see. Wow, lucky. Hey, Thrilla, welcome back. Oh my god, she's going nuts with these toys! She's going absolutely insane. Alright, uh, this is not good, actually. Let me come back down here. Yeah, you might be thinking about another Sonic Master System game, Game Eagle. Definitely not the first one. First one, you definitely time out. I actually had it time out, uh, when I was running tests. So, yeah, it absolutely times out here. Okay, there we go. Platform up. It's a very slow level. For a lot of people, the labyrinth zones in both, not just this, but the 16 bit versions too, are also kind of, you know, kind of buzz kills. It's not too bad here, it's just, it's really slow compared to the, uh, you know, above water sections.
Now, I don't remember where all the Chaos Emeralds are, so I'm not going to worry about getting them. What do we have there? Hey, Flynn, thanks for the, uh, thanks for the dollar. I appreciate that. Ah, uh, yeah, Sonic City, game's over. Uh, if you just stand around too long. I forgot about that. All right. Act two. So the third act of every level in this game is just a boss level, and you don't get any rings during them. Hey, John Smith. Welcome back. That's fine. Well, dead end. I thought I was going to hit him, but nope. I forgot about the uh, the arcade version of Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, I need to try that sometime. Man, I'm glad I didn't give her those toys super late because my neighbors would probably pop their tops. <laughs> She's going crazy. She doesn't normally go this crazy with toys. She really likes these ones. They included it in the Ages releases of uh, Sonic 1 on Switch. Oh, I didn't know that. I actually think I have that, too. I need to uh, fire that up and try it out. bubble. Hey, Monolith, welcome back. Yeah, John Evan, it's it's like a kind of like the Nintendo Super System or the uh, the Nintendo Play Choice 10 for NES. Uh, I think Sega had a similar thing going on. But they weren't that common. I never saw them back in the day. But yeah, it's a really good idea actually trimming out some levels that don't flow as well, you know. Because in an arcade setting, you know, operators want games that play fast. You know, so players are off the machine sooner. And then more people can put more, more money in. That's how they make money. So it makes sense to get rid of, like, the labyrinth stages, because they take a lot longer to go through. Oops. That was my fault. That's kind of clever. They want you to uh, use the invincibility to get the Chaos Emeralds. I forgot about that. Man. <laughs> Monolith says, does anyone like Labyrinth Zone? I mean, I don't mind it. You know, I'm not one of those people that's like, God, I hate that level so much. Oh yeah, we didn't get the uh, Chaos Emerald in the jungle area, so, oh well.
All right, boss time. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, all the boss levels generally have uh, at least one extra life in them. Okay, yeah, I can't do that. I don't bounce high enough. Monolith says all the music on SMS sounds the same. Yeah, there wasn't, unfortunately, a lot of variation that the sound hardware could deliver. So yeah, you do have, a, you know, the same kind of general sound for pretty much like every Master System game. But, you know, at least uh, there were some talented musicians making music. You know, you do have a lot of catchy tunes on Master, Master System at the very least. Like, Sonic the Hedgehog, I think, has a great soundtrack on SMS and Game Gear. <clears throat> okay, that's garbage. I thought it was just going to go straight across the screen. Uh, hardcore? I mean, I'm actually the same way. I prefer the PSG over the FM sound. The FM sound just... It's kind of like a halfway point between... You know, like... <laughs> it's like a halfway point between... Just the old 8-bit sound and... Like, what we got with the Genesis Yamaha chip. And, uh... Now, there are a couple of games I, I do actually prefer with FM, but it's it's rare, you know. I do find the PSG music to be, you know, just really catchy. And, uh... But yeah, later on tonight, we'll definitely play a game or two that, you know, supports the FM. There we go. Yeah, my, my issue, Deadly, with the FN sound on the Master System is if it sounds more like uh, what we got with, like, the AdLib sound card on PCs. Um, which is, you know... Typically not nearly... It, like, you listen to some, like, you know, more advanced stuff on the Genesis chip, and then you go back and you listen to AdLib, and you're like, eh, this feels really flat, and, uh, they're not... It's not many layers, and... It's very simple, you know? Uh, so... I do feel like you get more, like, rhythmic variety and stuff like that with the PSG. And it's- and, like, the white noise channel. <laughs> so, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, I would take... the Genesis FM over... you know, the PSG all day long, but... the Master System FM is... Like, it's more like the ad lib where it's much more simplistic, and so, yeah. For me, it's not just like, oh, because it's FM, I'll take it. I, uh, you know, I'm very selective about, you know, how I feel about it. That was a short level. And I'm not saying, like, I, I dislike AdLib. I mean, like, I, you know, I play Wolfenstein 3D all the time, and, you know, I love that soundtrack, but... You know, you can tell, you can... You can hear how dated it is compared to something like, you know, what you got with Doom and the Sound Blaster and, and whatnot. Um, not even Sound Blaster, more like the later, like, wavetable-type stuff. <laughs> 
or like Sound Blaster Pro, you know, there's, they did a uh, really cool stuff with that on like, you know, the epic mega games titles like Jazz Jack Rabbit and uh, Epic Pinball and stuff like that. Just banging soundtracks. Deadly, you could probably verify this because uh, you're you're more knowledgeable about this stuff than I am. But wasn't like the original Sound Blaster basically like an ad lib knockoff, and yeah, they probably sounded about the same. But then there were later models like Sound Blaster 16, which is much more advanced. And then you know, I think actually Sound Blaster Pro might have been before that. All right, so I always forget the route here. This is this gets a little maze like. You got to go the correct route. And I always forget what it is. Oops. I feel like I'm supposed to jump over here on one side. <laughs> hey, Constantine. I think I might be able to fall all the way down now. Let's see. Yeah, we go left. Alright, now I'm lost. I'm officially lost. Maybe this is where we end Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> I just, I don't remember the route. Don't remember what I'm supposed to do. Oops. Well, I don't even think it really matters that much. If I... Nope. Can't do it. Uh, let's go right. Yeah, the maze isn't hard when you've figured out the solution. But I don't remember the solution, so... <laughs> Oops, I was going too fast. Alright, well, this is a good time to switch, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's towards the end of the game, there's another level or two. I know there's like a skyship level, and there's a level where... Ah, uh, you gotta deal with like electrical objects and there's uh, it's constant flashing going on in the background. Patchouli! Patchouli! Come on up! Come on, Patchouli! Patchouli, come on, say hi to everybody! Come on, Patchouli! Come on, man! Come on, Patchouli! I'm gonna switch games while she's figuring out what she wants to do. Oh, man. All right. Uh, let's do something that's super janky. There you go, Pacholi. Come on up. Come on, Pacholi. Come on, man. Come on up. You can come on up. Come on, man. Hey, come here. Come on up, sweetheart. Come on up. You can come on up. Come on. Alright, she'll just jump up on her own. 
Yeah, her, her eyes are crazy in the camera. <laughs> Alright, so this is, uh, this is Space Harrier. One of those conversions that probably shouldn't exist on the console, but it does. It will play, it is playable, but it's, yeah, it's something. <laughs> Monolith says he has some patchouli and sandalwood soap. <laughs> and Velcro, I don't know if I said hi to you, but welcome back. And Ego. But yeah, I mean, this game's a lot more fun than, like, Afterburner on Master System. Afterburner is just, uh, not great. Oh, jeez. He goes all the way through the, uh, all the way through the screen, apparently. It's funny, uh, Master System Space Harrier was actually my introduction to Space Harrier. Uh, in the mid-90s. And then I would later get it on 32X, and then Saturn. And it's really hard to hit stuff in this version. Should be close to the boss fight. Uh, Ego? Yeah, the Mister is fantastic. It's great. You know, it's funny you mentioned about it holding up really well. Uh, I actually had an issue when I fired it up today. I was hearing all sorts of noises from the fan. It was like, bzzz, bzzz, bzzz. I was like, hmm. So I had to open it up. It's just like a little top plate on the top. It's four screws. It comes off and it reveals the fan. And it was just cat hair. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to I had to basically dust out my uh, my Mister today before doing the stream. So like I said on my NES stream earlier this week, I had uh, I've had the Mister for about a year and a half now, and it's I've never cleaned it out. So this is actually the first time I've had to do that. So I guess it is a device you you will probably have to do very light maintenance on occasionally. Unless you get, like, one of those all-enclosed sh uh, shells. I don't have that. I basically have, you know, it's bare PCB with uh, a top plate and a bottom plate. Come on, seriously. So there's also a uh, 3D glasses version of Space Harrier on Master System. Uh, it's just Space Harrier 3D. It's not the same game, actually. Uh, it is actually new levels and stuff like that, I believe. And it, it feels a little bit different, too, because uh, it did come out a little bit after this one. Yeah, that was short. <laughs> All right. Okay, we'll switch to another game. Okay, um, let me think to myself. What do I want to do? I don't know if I ever showed this off on the channel. Whee! Alright, Wonder Boy 3, Dragon's Trap. We'll probably play this for like a half an hour uh, or so. This is not a game I can play all in one sitting here. Um, <laughs> 3D on Master System, yes, yeah, Master System had 3D glasses. 
Uh, the Mister is that good, Constantine. It does way more than the Mega SG or Super NT does. And don't get me wrong, those those consoles are really nice. I really uh, kind of wish I still had mine, but I actually had sold them to buy a Mister. That's how I was able to pay for my Mister. Uh, you know, about a year and a half ago. Oh uh, yeah, this is an action adventure game. This is just the introduction. It basically plays out like it's the the last level of Dragon, not Dragon's Trap, um, Monster Land, whatever the hell it was called. <laughs> um, the second Wonder Boy game on Master System. But yeah, this is one I've never actually finished. I've always wanted to. Um, There we go. <laughs> Molinus says this is the Dark Souls of, of Master System. <laughs> Doesn't really matter if I take damage here. He's barely doing anything to me right now. So I don't even need to play skillfully here. Yeah, the thing about the Mister, like, I, I, I like the analog consoles, they're really good products, um, but, you know, unless you manage to get, like, a, um, like an NT Mini, uh, they're kind of just locked to specific consoles, so, like, Genesis, uh, you know, you can, you, you know, you can get the jailbreak for it and do, you know, ROMs on an SD card for Genesis, um, Master System and Game Gear, and that's cool, but that's all you get, you know? And with the Super NT, there aren't even any other cores that you can run on it. Oh yeah, the Mega SG actually also does ColecoVision, I forgot about that. Uh, and I think SG-1000. That's cool. But, that's it, you know? Super NT is even less, like there aren't any other cores for the Super NT, it's literally just Super Nintendo, that's it. Um... But the Mister, it's, it's like... Pretty much every 8 and 16-bit console under the sun, uh, IBM PC compatible, uh, computer cores, uh, you've got cores for all your, your, uh, you know, um, microcomputers and whatever, Commodore 64, Atari ST, uh, Amiga, stuff like that. You've got all sorts of handheld cores now, you've got, you know, Game Boy, Game Gear, Atari Lynx, Wonder Swan is on there now. Uh, I'm sure Neo Geo Pocket will come eventually. Um, you got your Atari consoles, like, you know, 2600, 7800. You got all the arcade cores. Uh, the Mister is just a much better value for your money, you know? Whereas, like, you buy an analog console, and it's, yes, it's nice, but you're paying half of what it costs to get, like, a fully decked out Mister setup just by buying one analog console. You buy two, that's 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 a fully decked out Mr. setup right there that you could have bought. So for people that just want to play um, a wide variety of stuff, I would recommend a Mr. first and then see if you want like something like an analog super NT or something. Desan says, uh, the Mister has had ha has had a few issues with some cores. Well, I mean, the analog stuff has had issues with, co with their cores as well. You know, there's a, a lot of firmware updates for those products, so they weren't, like, perfect out of the box, and neither is the Mister. But the Mister is constantly being updated. Um, so, something to keep in mind, it is constantly updated. The 68,000 core is coming, X68,000, hell yeah. Whoops, huh, that took me all the way back here. Alright, so I don't have any gold, um... But that's basically what I need to do, is I need to grind out for some gold. So this is, uh, you know, it's like a, sort of a non-linear game. Uh, it's one of those where it's like, you know, you have to get different abilities to, uh, to advance. Like, I need an ability that lets me go over this wall. And, uh, you know, we'll eventually get that. Hey, Hamilton! Happy late Thanksgiving as well. Yeah, so I guess what I need to do is I need to just, uh, go grind out on some enemies. I have to remember how to get back down. <coughs> back down to the watery area.
Analog NT Mini Noir version 2 can't play Battletoads on NES. Are you serious? That sucks. Hey, it's probably a heart extend. Yep, life extend. <clears throat> yeah, Desan, you definitely should. I know you would like it. Oops, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, I have the AVS, uh, which is why I never got an NT Mini. And AVS does battle, so it's just fine. <laughs> AVS isn't perfect either, you know, there is, uh... Wow, that's a lot of gold I need, but I do need the sword and shield. Hey, Leo. Leo says the Master System Core and the Mega SG still can't play at least one game, uh, which is, uh... Oh, yeah. Mr. Programmers seem to be much more responsive to bugs than analog, yeah. Alright, there we go. Yeah, whenever I do Let's Plays, I don't I don't use the Mister, even though the Mister technically displays at a higher resolution than the AVS does. Um, AVS is just a, uh, you know, it's a great little box for NES. And, uh, it's very convenient, easy to hook up. And, uh, I have a, I have a flash cart on the AVS that, uh, you know, allows me to do save states and things like that, so I can I can practice games faster. Yeah, so I, I did play this in the late 90s. I, I put a, a good bit of time into it. I got, you know, you get several different characters. Like, you change, like, so I'm a dragon right now, right? Uh, you end up getting transformed into, like, a lion man, or like a midget, or, or something like that. Um, so, you know, I got several transformations when I played this a long time ago. But I never did finish it. And I can't actually get up there. Big money bag, 62. Nice. Careful. Cool. Mm. <laughs> Shopping, please. Game Eagle asks, which Wonder Boy is the best? I really don't know. Um, my favorite is the first one, because it's just a simple action game. I would say a lot of people generally say probably this is the best, or the last one, um, Monster World. I think it's the one where you, like, you play as the chick. I, I, I forget. It's basically the last one. I think you, people will also say that one's, like, the best one. Yeah, so I guess my goal now is to go back to the the town, get uh, get uh, get some armor, because uh, these enemies are doing a lot of damage to me right now.
Yeah, and so, you know, this is a very unique game. It was, you know, developed for consoles, first and foremost. The first two Wonder Boys were arcade games. And so, you know, this one is like a totally different kind of format. And yeah, when the second Wonder Boy, uh, you are, you know, technically you have a sword and a shield, but it's still like a straightforward action game. Uh, with some, like, light adventure game elements, like you can go in the shops and buy stuff. But this is like, you know, more reminiscent of something like... Uh, I guess I wouldn't compare... Maybe Zelda 2 is like a bad comparison, but... Uh, there's definitely... It's it's not just a straightforward action game like, uh... You know, the first two games are. Uh, Society, yeah, this was also on Turbo Graphics. yep. Blah, 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 blah. Let's get some good money. And I can probably, yeah, hit the pause button here and... Not sure how to actually use those. There we go. Oh, and I have one key, too. Okay, because I'm pretty sure there's a locked door in the town. Yeah, this is a very visually pleasing game, too. Like, you know how I was talking about a lot of Master System games are flat. Um, like, there's no, like, background scrolling here or anything, but the simple, uh, you know, tile animations really help. It really helps to spruce things up. Whoops. Big money, 63 gold. Alright, so I definitely want to try to work my way back. I intentionally fell into the water because I knew there was a whole left-hand area I wasn't able to explore yet. And it looks like you can only have one projectile on screen at once. So if you fire again too quickly, it cancels out your projectile. Just taking it slow. I like those animations. <laughs> Those animations. They like turn around, face the screen, and uh, just lock up. Let me uh, come all the way over here. I don't know what's all the way to the left. Oh, never mind. I can't. All right. Cool. I can go in there now. Nice. All right. Let's, uh, go back to the shop guy. I hope that door didn't just lock itself. Ah, oh, that's right. Password saves. I forgot about that. Yeah, Constantine, there is a, uh, remake of this. Modern remake. Hmm, interesting. You can't buy it. Hmm. And having the start button on the controller is so much better. All right, uh, shield. Oh, it actually looks like I had a shield to start, which is cool. I didn't, I didn't realize that. Fifteen, twenty-four, nice. And I don't think. Okay, I've already got my sword equipped, but. Okay, good. The door remains unlocked. And that would have sucked if I had to go find another key. Uh, yeah, Society, I mean, that or a dedicated live stream. 
I don't know how long the game is. If it's like two hours long or longer, then I would definitely relegate it to a, uh, a live stream. Yeah, I mean, it's cool to be able to show the game off because, you know, like I said, it's an it's an awesome game. Man, he takes a lot of hits. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. Dude, he does so much damage. He does a ton of damage. Maybe I should go the other way. How often do I stream and how long do I stream? Um, I try to stream at least once once every week or once every other week. I don't have a specific day or time and how long I stream it just depends on what I'm doing. Like if I'm playing a specific game that takes two hours to beat, you know, I'll probably end the stream after I finish the game. But like tonight, I mean, I could stream up to like nine hours. I'm thinking about turning around because I don't uh, I don't like how this is looking. <laughs> These guys are taking a lot of hits. Look at that. That is a ton of health. Hmm. Yeah, like, I still don't know how to use these, though. Oh, okay. That is not all that useful, actually. <laughs> uh, let's try the boomerang. See what happens. Okay, that seems okay, but... Oh, it actually, uh, it looks like if you catch it, you don't actually lose it. Let's see, so it's at one, back at two. That's like Ninja Turtles on NES, I like that. Oh no, that's game over. <laughs> oh yeah, arrows. Yeah, that's a good point, Monolith. Yeah. You can um Yeah, kill the clouds of the arrows. It's a good point. Oh. Well, that sucked. Let's see if we can go back and uh Let's see if it lets us go the other way. this way. <laughs> Wasn't really paying attention if I lost like any gold when I got a game over. Be cool if these guys oops drop some health. Fireball. Let's actually select. Oh, I lost my uh, I lost my items though. That's a bummer. 
Let's try tornado. Let's see what that does. I figured. Okay. Even more health. Ow. Cool, you can actually kill those guys with the tornado. Or you, well, I don't know if you actually kill them, but it definitely did some damage. It did something. Whoops. Cart. Nice. Fireball. Yeah, there's the cloud guy. <laughs> Yeah, Monolith, I don't have that many tornadoes right now, so... Because my dumbass died... Um... Man, I don't remember if I was supposed to go all the way over the pyramid. <laughs> I haven't really done this since the 90s. It's been a super long time. We're gonna do it anyway. Sometimes they're like, there are, uh... I think there might be some hidden doors throughout the game. But yeah, welcome, Pouncing. Yeah, I mean, you stopped into the right place. I mostly focus on retro stuff here, so... If that's your cup of tea, you're in, the, you're in good hands. When I'm in a good mood, anyway. Monolith says, 8-bit pyramids are always fun, except Shin Megami Tensei, where it's literal hell. <laughs> Uh-oh. I bet you there's a door. Yep, I had a feeling it was. <laughs> I had a feeling it was that kind of door. Just one you like. You appear out of. All right, I've got no potions. These guys don't really want to drop anything. I didn't think his arrow was going to pop out that fast. Oh, I mean, it gave me a potion, but it, uh, I was hoping it was going to just like respawn me where I died. I was hoping that's like what the roulette was for. <laughs> Um, oh well. Alright. Let's see. Uh, so there is no backup RAM on this game, unfortunately, and it doesn't look like the Master System Core has save states implemented, which is a bummer. Uh, the NES Core has that now, but the Master System Core does not. So, oh well. 
uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll switch some games. That's a good little, that was like a half an hour of, you know, Dragon's Trap. It's just not bad. So, uh, for those of you guys that have never seen it, now you know what it's like. Um, I'm just going to be bouncing around from like random game to random game. Uh, just because. Um, just because. Black Belt. Yeah, early game based on Fist of the North Star in Japan. Over here is just called Black Belt. But it's a lot like Kung Fu, it's very simple. But it's got some really nice line scrolling graphics. And we want to get ourselves some items. I like punching because it's a little bit faster. Looks like that uh, power-up I got was invincibility, because I wasn't taking any damage from that guy. I love the uh, the little enemy explosions, too. I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. <laughs> the sprites just split apart. And one thing that's cool is that the boss fights at the end are actually, uh, you know... You have really big sprites, really big characters. The boss fights are really tough, though. There we go. Like, okay, I can do a... like... A moving jump kick and hit them as I go up. Hey! It's <laughs> hey! There we go. Alright, boss time. Cool, there we go. And then there's like a little finisher. <laughs> Depending on whether you finish with a punch or a kick. Am I playing these on an emulator or the original system? Uh, neither. I'm doing... Uh, playing these off a device called the Mister. Um, it's kind of like an emulator device, but it's basically... The hardware is being replicated at a hardware level as opposed to like a software level on you know, on a software emulator on a PC or something. And so, yeah, there are a lot of benefits to that. Um, but yeah, it's an all-in-one device that does a lot of different platforms. It's like, it's not just Master System. It was Genesis, Super Nintendo, NES, all sorts of computers. Um, and it's, a, it's a really awesome device. Yeah, I mean, Uber, you could technically say it's emulating, but, yeah, I like to say it simulates as well. I'm of the same mindset. Sim simulate or replicate. Man, this guy's being a pain in the ass. <laughs> I don't remember having problems with this guy. Maybe I'm supposed to just jump kick him. There we go. Jeez. Yeah, he was very fickle. Got my egg roll. Gives me my health back. 
Yeah, so you can go through a series of mini-bosses on each level. They get progressively harder as the game goes on. I guess this guy, they just want you to do a ducking kick? Oh, my toes! Boss time. Yeah, Deadly, I, I, I feel the same way, yeah. Hardware recreation or replication, yeah. And yeah, you're right, emulation is kind of like a dirty word for some people. So, kind of like, differentiating the mister with different wording is, I think, is a good thing. It separates it from, you know, software emulators on computers and other devices. Go. Now we're probably not going to beat this game because the the later bosses get really unfair. I think I, I did a let's play of this game like almost ten years ago, and um, I think I made it to the final boss, and I don't think I actually beat the final boss. <laughs> Boss time already. Oh yeah, this dude. I think he was really aggressive. Yeah. Nice. You got lucky. <laughs> Yeah, Uber, yeah. Using the term emulation when talking about the mister can leave, uh, you know, false preconceptions of the device. Yeah, I agree. Say, say Gabriel. <laughs> Besides me, someone else is playing Master System. Amazing. Yeah, we play Master System occasionally here. It's a console I grew up with, and uh, it's a console I've always enjoyed. I should just be jumping over these guys because I'm invincible right now. Man, I can't. I just can't. <laughs> I'm having trouble just turning around and jumping. Feels like they really want me to jump kick this guy. There we go. Nice. Invincible. Let's just jump. I can punch those. 
And I was still invincible that whole time. I was trying to not take damage. But I was invincible, so I could have just taken damage all day long. And the mini boss? Nope, boss fight. These guys, you really have to figure out their their patterns. Trying to figure out what he's going to do. <laughs> That's a black belt. Yeah, fun game. Alright, let's try something else. I'd like to try to play some games that I haven't, like, put a lot of time into on my channel. Well, I'm going to have to actually, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be a hypocrite. All right, what I think I'm going to do is actually take a quick, quick bathroom break. Uh, and I will be right back. I might actually grab some caffeine while I'm at it. We are hour and a half into this stream. But yeah, let me do that. Hey, Cigarette Juice Man, welcome back. Scott says, I've never seen any of these games. Great stream. <laughs> well, thank you. That's what's cool about doing streams like this is, you know, I get to show off games that some of you guys might know, some of you guys might not know. You know, you can learn something, basically. So. Does Patchy give kisses? Uh, she will lick my hair sometimes. Sometimes. Usually when there's hair gel in it, I think she just likes the taste of it. <laughs> sometimes she'll lick my forehead, too. It's, it's not that common, but it, she does do it occasionally. Alright, I'll be right back. Thank you. 
All right. Yeah, I really like both Fantasy Zones, but this is definitely my favorite of the bunch. Got some caffeine. <laughs> Am I gonna play Fantasy Zone? The Maze. Um... Maybe, maybe not. I've never been very good at that one. Definitely one that not a lot of people give a lot of love. <laughs> oh, man. All right, here we go. Fantasy Zone 2. So, if you've never played Fantasy Zone, it's a side-scrolling shoot-em-up. More in the vein of something like Defender, because you can scroll the screen back and forth. Uh, there is money involved. Uh, which allows you to buy stuff. Which allows you to make your life a lot easier. And uh, the core goal of every level is to destroy these, uh, these big pods. These stations, whatever you want to call them. There is a term for it, I'm sure. When you start, I believe it is instant kills. But unlike the first game, you do actually end up extending your health bar as the game progresses. Depending on uh, items you buy. There's there's uh, hidden shops as well. There's regular shops, but then there's also hidden shops. Now, there is no timer, so you can just grind out on enemies all day long if you want. But we have to take these warps to other screens. There we go, there's a shop. And, uh, so I'm gonna do big wings. And I'm gonna do... Hmm... I went twin bombs or a big bomb? Twin bombs are probably more useful. And then I can, uh, I can buy a weapon. Oh no, I don't have enough money, actually. And then you can just equip those. So now I'm a little bit faster. And my bomb is bigger, so it does more damage. Yeah, this game actually gets really hard, too. It's, uh, it's definitely not a walk in the park. A lot of hidden shops are, like, on the bottom. Um, so you just need to shoot, and uh, you'll see your projectiles just disappearing, which means that, uh... There's a hidden shop. There's also a power-up you can get later on that enables auto-fire. Auto-rapid-fire. Which is really nice. But yeah, once we destroy all these uh, stations or pods, uh, we go to the... Uh, the red warp sign. That'll actually take us to a boss fight. Let's see. Yep, okay. This first level's not too big. It's not too long. That was a good fight. You notice that I got close to the boss, so I could hit him with my bomb at the same time. But yeah, these levels become really large. They get pretty big. And a little confusing, even. Ooh, there. Enemies start to get really aggressive, too. Oh, 
All right. Yep, here we go. It's a secret. Boom. That actually extended our health bar. Let's go back to the shop. Cigarette asks, would I like a modern fantasy zone? Uh, yeah. I mean, I would. Absolutely. Definitely want an extra life. Um, uh, three-way shot. I think that's a, just a timed, uh, just a timed weapon. Hey, Crest Lion. <laughs> who's, who's cuter? Opa Opa or Twin B? Definitely Opa Opa. Yeah, Opa Opa is much cuter, if you ask me. Yeah, and Ronin, this is a very colorful game. Yeah, it's one of the most colorful games on the system. It, the colors just pop on this game. <clears throat> PS1 Core and the Mister got full ISO loading today. Lots of games partially working, at least. Oh, very good news. Very good news. I'll have to check that out. And, yeah, the three-way shot is just a temporary upgrade. A lot of your weapon upgrades are just temporary. Otherwise, your character would be super overpowered. And as you buy stuff, uh, they become more expensive to buy them again. I don't think that's everything. Oh, it is. Interesting. Nice. Do -do 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 -do. Hey, Pop, welcome back. All right, so Uber says uh, it was a pretty sweet video. They're using uh, two memory modules. Oh, are you talking about the PS1 core and the Mister? They plan on releasing the core working on just one memory module. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, some people were worried that uh, the Mister might have to be expanded even further in terms of memory in order to get like PS1 and Saturn working. And I'm not really sure how they would do that. I, I don't know. Not really sure what that would entail. Definitely want those dollar bills. Those bills are worth a lot more than the uh, big coins. Just making sure there aren't any secrets or anything. You gotta really play on your toes on this one. Firebomb! Alright, that's just a one-time use item. And, uh, we'll go ahead and do the, uh, three-way shot. Nah, we'll, we'll do the laser beam, because it's a lot cheaper right now. Old Dirty Gamer says, R-Type is one of my favorite shooters, but it's a glitchy mess on Master System. Um... I don't think it's a glitchy mess. I mean, yeah, it's... Obviously, far from arcade perfect, <laughs> but yeah, I, I uh, actually like that version a lot. I actually uh, finished the Master System version on stream like a year or two ago. Um, we did a uh, Master System shmup stream, and I ended up beating R-Type on it. Which I think was the first time I ever finished the Master System game. Alright, let's see if there are any upgrades here. Any secrets? Alright, none on the bottom floor. 
Not on the top. Over here. Oh yeah, of course. Compared to TurboGrafx-16, I mean TurboGrafx-16 is a much more capable console. So, but the Master System version is still a, a, a really solid 8-bit shooter. All right, secret right here. Ooh, that was close. All right, that was a timer. I don't know what that did. <laughs> No idea what that did. If anybody knows, sound off in the, uh, the chat. Hey, Cigarette Juice Man, thanks for uh, joining up as a channel member. You can use those, uh, those kitty emotes now. Okay. See if there are any secrets. Yep, there's another one right there. Shop, secret shop. Hell yeah. Look at this. Auto beam. Big shot. Shield. Let's go with the uh, the blue bottle. Okay, yeah, I should have went with the red bottle first and then got the blue bottle. Shield. Continue. You can actually buy a continue. Uh, oh, I don't have enough for the big shot. I can just technically grind out, I guess. Oops. I'm going to have to actually go back to the shot. Okay, no. Auto fire is applied. <laughs> I start feeling really powerful. <laughs> it's great. All right. Yep. Okay. Oh, hell yeah. We got the big shot, we got the auto fire. Oh, yeah, I think we can probably go ahead and exit. Yep, there it is. Good deal. <laughs> Ego says, <laughs> Master of Darkness, the Castlevania Master System. Yeah, we'll probably not be playing that tonight. I've already got a Let's Play of it. <laughs> and uh, I know it's not gonna... It's gonna sound like sacrilege, but I actually don't like the game that much. Yeah, if anyone is curious about Master of Darkness, I have a Let's Play of it. I actually have two Let's Plays of it. I have uh, a Let's Play of both the Game Gear and the Master System versions. So, yeah, feel free to just go check those out on my channel. Fire makes life so much easier. <laughs> Society says nothing better than chucking down some good old cigarette juice. Old Dirty Gamer says, I guess I'll have to give it a second try, related referring to R-Type. I mean, you don't have to. I mean, so Master System R-Type is a little redundant because you do have the PC Engine version and you do have like the PlayStation version and you know, on our types and so yeah, it's a little redundant, but for an 8-bit shooter, it's it's still a good game. It's still solid, it still plays well. But if you have access to the other versions, then there's not really much reason to go and play the Master System one. Unless you're just someone like me and you like playing all the different versions and you know, appreciating the differences.
Is there an outrun port on the master system? There is, yes. And I'll probably play it later tonight, because I, I want to. I just, I feel like it. Now, we're going to upgrade to the, uh, the normal engine. But yeah, there's regular OutRun, then there's uh, OutRun 3D. And then there's another one in Europe called uh, OutRun Europa, I think? But that's not really a traditional OutRun game. some money. It's very easy to get sidetracked and just grind out forever because the enemies just, they come out really fast. There's like, there's no break in this game. There's no break. There's a secret down here. Thought I heard something. Maybe not. We're back up to forty thousand dollars. Okay, I got some health back. I, I think I must have found a secret that gave me some health back. Old Dirty Gamer says, Cloudmaster is great. He loves shooting. <laughs> yeah, I suck at Cloudmaster. How does this handle the 3D games, or does it at all? Um, It should handle them. Um, uh, Yeah, you just have to figure out how to get some shutter glasses working. So Gabriel says, you're a really good Fantasy Zone 2 player. I only finished it with the Genesis Turbo Controller. Nice. Yeah, I've only ever beaten this game, I think, once or twice. Um, make it really challenging later on. Right, we're going to go with the extra ship, the extra life. Uh, we'll do the, uh, do the wide beam for now. It's not that great, and it, you know, like all the other weapons, it doesn't last very long. I want to default to be back to the, uh, the small beam. I need to change that. Alright, no secrets as far as I can tell. And boss time. Yeah, if you're really slow on that boss, it's it's really really hard. Yeah, at every level you got to learn the enemy patterns too, the constant spawning enemies. Otherwise, you'll get wrecked if you don't know how to deal with them. Ooh, that was close. 
All right, let's go through this warp. Yeah, something to remember about the Mister as well, as I talked about it earlier, is you can do analog video output on this. So as long as you have some shutter glasses and you run this into a CRT, you should get the 3D effect just fine. Wow, I'm getting super lucky there. Go to the shop. <clears throat> and that's true too, Leo. Yeah, a lot of the 3D games do have uh, 2D modes, like uh, Zaxxon 3D. You know, you have to go to the options menu, which is... I don't know if you have to hit the pause button or something, but... Uh, on the title screen to do it, I don't remember. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and just go back to the big shot. I'm not gonna use the laser right now. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> I didn't die at least, because I had a shield. And now I have uh, ex an ex extended health bar too, so I'm not going to die in one hit either. But I still have to be really careful. Check it out. So I got a timer. I think I got a clock. I, I still don't know what the clock does. Ooh, that was close. It's intense. Oh, that's a good good idea, Leo. Yeah, rename the ROM file and put the instructions on how to change it to 2D. Yeah, because it's different from game to game. Oh, look at that. Twin big bombs. Hell yeah. I will definitely do that. Cigarette says, I heard Psycho Fox is a good Master System game. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I've never really cared for Psycho Fox, but I'd like to try it and like try to actually put some real effort into it. A lot of slowdown with this seven-way shot. Oh, secret shop. Alright, so we want the red bottle first, and then the blue bottle. Ha 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 ha! Another shield! Hell yeah. This is really the secret to actually doing well at Fantasy Zone 2, is finding the secrets. I mean, no pun intended. If you don't find the secrets, uh, you're gonna have a hell of a time with the game. Alright, that might be all of them. Let's see if we can find an exit. Actually, let me get my big shot again. It's funny, just when he was about to answer my question, the stream froze completely. What was your question, uh, Hardcore? Let's scroll up the chat. Hey, Ronnie, I didn't see you out there. How does this handle 3D games, or does it at all? Oh, well, I'll answer it again. I mean, it... Um... You know, if you if you are displaying this on a CRT, which you can do with the Mister, you know, it's got analog video output. Uh, if you have some like a you know some shutter glasses, 
you know, it, the 3D should work. Um, now, I don't know if it's possible to use the 3D and use, like, if you have a 3D HD TV, if that works with, with those custom glasses, I'm not sure. Oh, I didn't select uh, the big shot again. There we go. Mario says he's doing okay, been eating food. <laughs> I went over to my parents' house tonight, and it was like, it was basically still Thanksgiving. They were in the middle of eating food from last night, and I ended up making some stuff while I was there. So it was like Thanksgiving, two days in a row. Get those big coins. Yeah, it's so nice I've got dual twin bombs. Two dual big twin bombs. <clears throat> and I'm not gonna get any of those right now. Ooh. Oh, that was a blue potion. That just gave me all my health back, but I already had all my health, so it was kind of a waste. This is kind of nothing. Let's see. Uh, extra life. Might as well. We have five lives now. <laughs> you usually have to eat Thanksgiving leftovers for a week with how your family cooks. Yeah. <laughs> and Monolith says, I'm eating a turkey sandwich right now. Roddy says, I hate turkey. So I made steak. Nice. <laughs> and Cigarette says, I wish mining Bitcoin was like this. Yeah, right? Be much more entertaining. I will say, Fantasy Zone 2 is kind of grueling compared to the first game, because it's it's much bigger. Every level is much larger. Oh, there. scary. Alright, no secrets, as far as I can tell. Nope, secret shop. Check that out. <laughs> Extra ship, $100! You can bet your ass on buying that. I don't know if we cap out at five lives, or if, uh, if it still registers them. Alright, I definitely want to grind out for some cash here, though. I definitely want those bottles. Unfortunately, this level is not as fun to grind out on because the enemy patterns aren't as, I guess, easy to deal with as some of the other stages. Yeah, 
Nice. Ah, oh, keep missing. Twenty-five thousand. I think the red bottle was like thirty. Yeah, when the enemies are super fast, the coins that they drop carry that momentum. And so if they're like flying across the screen, the coins just start like rolling like crazy and you can't catch up with them. Okay, we're at about 30,000 right now. All right, let's see. Yeah, 30,000 and then 28,000 for the next one. And it's gonna take a while, but well, I don't really, I probably don't really need the blue bottle. Especially if it ends up costing me my shield, because, you know, these enemies are tough to deal with. I don't know, I should still try to go for it. I was really close. I dropped my bomb at just the right time. Thousand ninety six hundred. That's better. Oops. Halfway there. This is a grind. All right, I'm getting close. Ooh. Yeah, and I lost my shield too, so... I feel like grinding out for this uh, bottle is not really worth it. Although I could technically take a couple of hits and uh, get my health back. Oh, 
Okay, there it is. So let me run into an enemy. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, shield is 60,000. Ugh. Ugh, I really want that shield. <laughs> I can't, I can't do it. I can't grind out that long. Whew. This grind needs frying my brain. Unless I get some really good money from these, uh, these pots, I might go back. Yeah, 13k. Just trying to see if there are any secrets here. You can kind of just like wave up and down, just zigzag up and down the screen. Alright, I think that's it. Uh. Yep, that's it. Hi, John. Welcome to the stream. All right, 33,000. Oh, this level's got some crazy enemy patterns. I remember this one. Very aggressive. Hopefully we can keep the slowdown in motion, or just keep the slowdown going, I mean. That'll help. See any secrets? <laughs> so much harder than the previous levels. The nice thing about the shops is that they're like breathers. You can just sit in here all day long. Cigarette asks, do I have a favorite Master System game? Uh, it is probably Fantasy Zone 2. This is probably my favorite game on the system. Uh, Alright, let's take a look at chat. <laughs> Ronan says, I'm getting anxiety from watching you dodge those enemies. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, the, the enemies in this game get pretty crazy. Monolith says, I'm getting Enter the Gungeon vibes. <laughs> Pulls out Switch and plays Animal Crossing. <laughs> oh, man. Alright. Let's just roll with this. for those green guys. Yep, there we go. Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> they just fly in so fast. <sighs> Man. Uh, I did not, Leo, no. <laughs> Thanks, cigarette. Dude, your streams are legendary. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right. Um. Let's go back. Oh, I took a hit. Nice. Another life extend. I just gotta get my health back. we have here? Uh, just normal stuff. I need a secret shop so I can try to get my all my health back. What's in this shop? Just bombs. Bombs? Bombs are good, but I need health. Oh, shit! That was my fault. Pardon my French. <clears throat> uh, and I... I lost my uh, auto fire. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, that's that sucks. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to mash the button again. I lost my big bombs. I'm trying to find the exit. There it is. Yeah, I don't know what the timers or the, the clocks do either. Why you need auto fire? <laughs> Rapid fire. Ugh. God, this sucks. I'm gonna die. Uh. All right, see you, Carl. Take care. Ugh. I gotta remember where the shop is. Uh, 
Yes, one of the things about this game is it's really tough to recover. Even if you've got a full health bar like this. This level is just mean. Yeah, see, I want to find the other shop so I can get, uh, potentially get some, oh, jeez. I get some bombs. Maybe I can try to using bombs on the boss. Twin big bombs, cool. Uh, fireball. Fire bomb, heavy bomb, smart bomb. You can only use one? Okay. Oh, it gives you ten fire bombs, okay. Okay. Hmm, ow. I don't know if this is gonna really work, but we'll see. Wait, what? Uh, this isn't good. I think this might be it, guys. <laughs> I really think this might be it. I don't think I can really do this. I gotta find my shop again. You basically lose everything. It's crazy. Oh. Yeah, I don't really have any cash either. I'd have to grind out. such a rinky-dink shot, I just can't do anything. And I'm so slow. Yeah, I, I do wish the SMS core had save states. That would be nice. Hopefully that's something that'll come eventually. <sighs> Alright guys, well I mean, I think this is pretty much it for Fantasy Zone 2. I don't think I'm gonna... It really sucks that I, I can't really do this without grinding like crazy because, like, I'm in a really good position in terms of, like, having a full health bar and stuff like that, but I just, I'm not gonna be able to... Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to do this. Man, that's a real bummer. Yeah, and this shop is all bombs, I, I recall. Yeah. Like, if it was just an engine, it would be fine. I, I need an engine, but I don't want to go explore for it, so... R.I.P. 
Let's have some cat. Sleepy cat. Alright, well, I mean, it was still fun. It's always great showing off that game. This is the Master System Outrun. As it had been mentioned earlier. drink. Yeah, so for this one, um, due to the limited buttons on the controller, you have to press uh, down or up to switch gears. But yeah, it's a choppy game. Uh, but it, it plays okay. For the time, it's okay. Yeah, it's not nearly as smooth as, like, Rad Racer on NES, but, you know, OutRun's one of my favorite arcade games, and so, like, I have a soft spot with some of these, like, lesser conversions. I like how the PSG sounds on this game, too. Well, yeah, we'll see what we can do here. I was playing OutRun last night on uh, Xbox, both OutRun 2 and the original arcade OutRun that's included in it. It's an unlockable. I like it when, like, the camera kind of locks into place and you just literally move left and right. The controls feel a lot smoother when the track's not constantly curving. Oh, not good. Not good. Yeah, like this right here. Uh, Crystal, you can stop spamming Sonic too. <laughs> Please. Hey, Cafe Man. I might play Sonic 2 later. I might not. I don't know. We'll see. We played Sonic 1 already, so Sonic 2 would be somewhat fitting. The chop is distracting, Monolith says. Yeah, it is. It actually kind of is. This is kind of like what I was talking about earlier, where, like, you know, there are a lot of conversions to the Master System that probably shouldn't have existed to begin with. Because, like, you know, Afterburner, Outrun, Space Harrier, they're all just ridiculously choppy. And, um... It's kind of hard to go back to these, these days. You know, they might have been fine for the 80s, but they, they have not held up well at all. Again, something like Rad Racer on NES, it's so much smoother and so much more playable today, even. Like, you go and you play the game, you're like, man, this is still a lot of fun, because it's, you know, it's responsive, and it's... It <laughs> doesn't hurt your eyes, and, you know, that sort of thing. Now, if I remember, there's, uh, I forgot what it was called, um... There's a, uh, another racing game for Master System, and actually, it's more like pole position. It actually runs really smooth. Dude, this track is just constantly going left and right, and I can't keep up with it. Alright, zigzag.
Alright, we might not actually make this. I had to take these turns way too slow. Uh, 13 seconds, I don't know if we're gonna get it. I don't think we are. Oh, just barely. Oh, wow, just barely. Yeah, World Grand Prix, that's it, Leo. Yep. Ah. This is this is our final track. I don't think it is. I think this might be track four. Uh, we're not gonna make this. I can't see where I'm going! Ugh. Ugh, alright. Well, that's it. Man, that was a bummer. I'll outrun such a short game, I'll do it again, but I'll go to the right this time. Yeah, we're almost at the last checkpoint. Now, I do believe... <clears throat> This is an FM supported game. All right, so I'll take the right hand path this time. It just sounds so weird to me. turns. Yeah, another driving game uh, that I, I really enjoy in Master System is uh, just Hang On. You know, it was an early pack-in game. And unfortunately, it doesn't have in-game music, but the gameplay is really smooth compared to this. Yeah, so I had mentioned, uh, World Grand Prix, but also Hang On is, uh, you know, plays really well in Master System. I would play some Hang On tonight, but again, there's no music, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother on stream. It's not gonna be as entertaining. <laughs> Yeah, one thing you've got to watch out for in this game, too, is, like, not pressing the D-pad super hard or super heavy. Especially if you're playing on an actual Master System controller. Because, um, you know, you'll accidentally downshift by accident. That was redundant, but yeah, you'll, you'll downshift by accident. But sometimes, like, you'll be like, why am I going so slow? <laughs> you won't realize it until it's too late. 
Yeah, the, the old Master System D-pad, it's just, it's not great for, you know... I mean, you've got games that it's more than just left and right. <laughs> for just left and right games, it's fine, but once you start having to press up and down and go diagonally and stuff like that, you'll, you'll find yourself doing diagonals by accident all the time. Or even just, like, pressing up by accident when you don't mean to. Not a really good D-pad design. I, I have a soft spot for it, but it's not... It's not really a, a great controller. Which is unfortunate. But it's one thing I love about being able to play Master System on something like the Mister or like the Mega SG or even just the Sega Genesis is like you can use a much better controller with Master System games. Monoliths suggest ALF. No, we're definitely not playing ALF. <laughs> I don't like that game. <laughs> I'm only gonna play games that I'm either really curious about, or I, I personally enjoy. <laughs> I don't personally enjoy ALF. Mark, it's because we're using the FM sound hardware. It's the same game. Basically, in you know, in Japan, there is a FM sound module add-on for the Master System, and a lot of games that we got over here supported it, but we never got the module released over here. But if you take the, uh, you know, if you're playing on like an emulator or you're playing on. Uh, power-based converter that has the FM sound built in, which is a newer thing. Uh, you know, these games will support it. So our first run, we, we used the original sound hardware, and now we're using the FM sound hardware. And again, we are not gonna make this. Damn, this version's harder than I remember. So close. This is true, Savitor, yeah. Stick with fun games. That's kind of the point of games. Cafe Man says, when he owned a Master System in the 2000s, he couldn't find many games. He prefers emulation and ROMs. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right, let's switch games. All right, so I'm going to turn the FM sound back off first. because a lot of these other games aren't going to even have the support. Alright, I have to go to my European games. Was there a Jurassic Park game on Master System? I don't know. It's possible there could have been one in um, 
you know, in Europe, but there definitely was not one here in the States. Yeah, Sonic 2 Master System is definitely the better way to play it. Game Gear version, it's extreme screen crunch. Game Gear 1 really turns into like a total memorizer because it's so hard to see things. Okay, actually... Yeah, I don't remember where all like the Chaos Emeralds are in this game. I know on one of them, on this first level, it's like all the way on the top route to the right. I think it's level 2, not level 1. Yeah, extra life. All right, Act One. Yeah, this is this game plays really smooth. It runs real smooth. Lots of nice graphical effects. You know, some of the level design is <laughs> leaves a uh, leaves a lot to be desired, but um, yeah, I'd say it's a really solid uh, Master System game. Oh yeah, get Sonic on the edge. Yeah. <laughs> Chaos Emerald? Yep, there it is. Yeah, one nice thing is that um, in the first Sonic, when you take a when you take damage, all your rings are combined into a single ring that drops. Whereas this one, they actually spread out. Like that was a nice improvement over the first game. No, you can definitely reach them, Uber Disco. It's just, uh, you have to memorize how to get to them. Yeah, the screen crunch is, is really bad on this game, on, uh, the Game Gear version. You know, I, I still love this game on Game Gear as a kid, but it's hard to go back to because of the screen crunch. But I did play the hell out of this game growing up on Game Gear. It was one of my favorite games. Yeah, some of the, uh, sound, uh, Music that plays is uh, different in this one, too. I think the boss music in this one's different. That's weird. Um, yeah, in the Game Gear version, those balls, they bounce at different heights. So you have to gauge, uh, you know, if they're bouncing high or low. Some you have to go under, others you have to jump over. <clears throat> have I ever tried Captain Silver? Uh, Saboteur, I did a long time ago, but I never really put much time into it. Uh, Eric says, Master System seems like this strange system where it seems more advanced in some areas than the NES, but then is more limited in areas that the NES wasn't. Yeah, and that's, that's a perfect assessment, yeah. Like Ronnie said. That's absolutely true. And it's the same with the 16-bit consoles, you know? They all have their strengths and weaknesses. You know, like Turbo Graphics versus Super Nintendo versus Genesis, you know? They all have their strengths and weaknesses, and it was the same with, um, you know, the 8-bit consoles. Yeah, so Master System's big advantage was, uh, the higher color palette. Um... The NES's big advantage was, um... Uh, you know, basically expandability in the cartridges, which allowed for, um... 
you know, uh, things that, uh, allowed the NES to do things that it just wasn't really built for. Yeah, and I always get confused on how to use the hang gliders in this. Yeah, I mean, Crystal, you're, you're welcome to chill here. You just kick back, relax, and chill. You don't have to spam, uh, you know, game requests and stuff like that. I keep I keep looking at the uh, the chat. I'm like, man, what's happening here? But no, Uber and Ronnie, thanks thanks for uh, keeping on top of things. I do appreciate it. But yeah, people, just like hang out, relax, have fun. Monolith, I mean, just something to keep in mind with NES is that, again, without that cart expandability, we never would have had games like Castlevania 3. Um, Ninja Gaiden 2, things like that. So, it, that wasn't really as much about tapping the NES's full potential, like... <laughs> you know, they... <laughs> Without, like, uh, you know, the mappers and, and in cases like, you know, Japanese Castlevania 3 with its sound processor and stuff like that, you know, you would not have those more advanced games that became the norm for the console. Uh, what those games are doing, the NES stock out of the box is, like, not capable of that, period. Um... So it's not like they were pushing the NES to its limits. It's like they were using expandability through the cartridges to be able to do better things, more impressive things. Um, those Master System games, as far as I'm aware, like, they don't do that. Um, pretty much everything is just using the stock Master System hardware, nothing more. Nothing more, nothing less. I remember this guy was a little tricky with his projectiles. Alright, there we go. And I like how they use, like, layers in this one, like, you're you're actually behind the clouds. That's not something you saw very often with Master System games. So many Master System games are always on, like, you know, the foreground layer. Erickson seems like Master System excels at smooth animations of the sprites over NES. Uh... I don't know if I really agree with that. I feel like they're about even in that regard. I mean, it's just really simple animation techniques. Like, you see the water here? You see a, you see that type of stuff all the time on NES games. Like, the Mega Man titles have a lot of that. You know, Batman on NES has really simple animations that are just cleverly put together. Resulting in, like, really nice, smooth, like, conveyor effects and things like that. So, it just depends on the game. Again, see Ninja Gaiden's, uh, see, uh, like, Ninja Gaiden 2 and 3, see, uh, Kabuki Quantum Fighter, and, uh, Vice Project Doom, and Shatterhand. Yeah, so you need to roll, uh, through that, and then you bounce on the top of the water, which is cool. Uh, if I remember correctly, we probably come down here to the right. Oh, shoot! Ah, uh, not good. Oh, jeez, <laughs> come on, game. Alright, I think that's it.
These are basically observations. Is that you're basically your first time seeing the master system. Oh, wow. So you haven't really messed around with much master system. Okay. That's what's cool about doing these streams. Some of you guys see see new things. Uh, Crystal, we're just timing you out because you're going crazy with all your suggestions and stuff. So just, like I said, just chill. <laughs> you're not bad. They're just timing you out to be like, hey, pull it back a little bit, chill out. That's it. That's all it is. <laughs> Don't take offense to it, but... Yeah, just chill out. Have... just chill out. <laughs> Yeah, this, this area seems kind of weird because, uh, I was moving fast at one point, and then I was moving slow. Didn't really make a whole lot of sense. Oh, yeah, that's right. Now we ride these bubbles. I remember this. Man, let's put a jacket on. It's getting f freezing in here right now. I'm shivering. We have to hold down. Yeah, this is like you see the uh, the foreground layers. It's so good. Like not many Master System games did that. It's a way to like get the uh, illusion of like depth without having like parallax scrolling in the background. It's really cool. Hey, Lawrence, welcome back. Can I get it? Okay. Okay, I didn't really need to do that. Yeah, this game has a lot of these things, too, and there's like a big puzzle with these later on in the game. Hell, even here it looks like I have to hit certain directions. Okay. It was fine. For some reason, I didn't think that was going to go all the way across the screen. And the sound effects in this game are really solid too, you know, like the, the echoiness uh, of, of the rings. It's really cool. Oh there, why was I not able to jump up there? What the I think I have to actually use the bubble. Yeah, that's, that's dumb. I have to go all the way back down. Whee! Okay, good, that's the exit. Nice. Eric says, I grew up through the evolution of the NES games, so he remembers vividly experiencing the games as they got better. Around Mega Man 3, it was the last huge jump, huge jump he remembers. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, there were more advancements after that. Um, I think you look at, like, Batman Return of the Joker or something like that. Or again, like, Vice Project Doom. Uh, so much visual eye candy in that game. Um... Uh, yeah, Lawrence says, hope I didn't miss too much. I was watching some of the other stuff. Hope your Thanksgiving was fine. Yeah, man. Yeah, Lawrence, it was good. Um... Ronnie says, Eric, that's why I'm really interested in later era of games on consoles. You get to see what developers have learned to pull out of these systems as they continue to develop for them. Yeah. Um, Sonic 1 and 2 were released after the Genesis versions? Yeah, I believe so. Um, I mean, I think they were both released in the same year, though. But yeah, I'm going to assume they came out after the Genesis versions. Yeah, the evolution of NES music is incredible. Yeah, I agree, Eric. Savator says Master System was the first console he purchased for himself. It took him so long to save up the money, and the price dropped, and he got the 3D slash light gun version instead of the base system. Nice. Oh, yeah, Kirby. Kirby is uh, an amazing game on NES. Like, just both. You know, from a gameplay standpoint, but also just technically speaking. And then Gimmick as well, for sure, Monolith, absolutely. Well, let's actually look at the copyright date on this. I'm curious if it's, uh... Curious if it uh, came out in '92 in Europe. It's such a weird boss. Sure, this is all I have to do. Yep, that's it. Yeah, Ronnie, Golden Axe and Altered Beast were actually... Uh, Altered Beast in particular was actually kind of an... I wouldn't say an earlier game on the Master System. It was, it was probably like 88 or 89. And it's uh, it's it's super choppy. It's, it's kind of hard to appreciate. Same with Golden Axe. They're not really good games on Master System. Again, just an example of arcade ports being brought... You know, arcade, arcade games being brought to the console that probably shouldn't have, or if they did, they, you know, they should have been done differently. Golden Axe probably should have been made more like a, a Chibi-style, you know, almost Double Dragon or a Kunio Kun-style game. You know, it should have been altered to, to better suit the hardware. Yeah, good old classic tune here. This level has a bunch of, uh... Oh, man, like... Blind jumps that you have to make. It's kind of brutal. Oh, come on, really? That was garbage. Oops. I remember when I was a kid and I first heard this tune, I, I think I had it stuck in my head for, like, weeks. Better or worse than NES Altered Beast? Well, NES Altered Beast is... I haven't played it in a really long time, so I can't really say. I know NES Altered Beast plays a lot faster, <laughs> but it also uses, like, tiny, tiny sprites. But it's an example of, like, you know, 
probably how they should have done it on the Master System. Uh, but they wanted... I'm sure Sega wanted something that, like, really resembled the arcade game. <laughs> At least on the back of the box in screenshots. Um... And thus we got the choppy mess that is Altered Beast Master System. Oh, there's still a lot more playable than, like, Golden Axe. I, I actually do like Altered Beast on Master System, but it's it's not a game I really recommend people play. Like, if someone's like, hey, what are some Master System games I should play? I don't ever bring up Altered Beast, you know? God damn it, man. See, actually, what I should be doing is holding down. You can look up and down on this. And I'm not actually doing that. Oops. And actually, the Chaos Emerald is somewhere up top on one of these levels. And we also missed the Chaos Emerald on the, uh... The, you know, the Cloud level. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Did this version of the song come first? Yes, Monolith. Yeah, this came out before um, Sonic CD. Yeah, and Sean, thanks for the reminder. I'm gonna have to actually play uh, the Famicom Altered Beast again. Yeah, see, this part right here is kind of like, ugh. You have to know exactly where to land on these things, and... No, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, Sonic 2 uh, Game Gear, or in Master System, it's... It's got some nasty trial and error. Which is kind of a bummer because, like... The game looks really good and it, it plays really smooth. Oops! Yeah, you're not alone there, Ronnie. A lot of people prefer Japanese Sonic CD music. I still need to play through Sonic CD with the Japanese soundtrack, and I know I can do that on the Xbox 360 and PC versions. But I've always had a soft spot for the North American one, because that's what I grew up with. Oh, I did it again. Completely overshot. Savator says Sonic CD is his favorite Sonic game. Very nice, man. Very nice. Sonic CD is definitely up there for me, too. I mean, granted, <laughs> my Sonic game usually kind of stops with the 16 bit games. I wasn't really a big fan of uh, the 3D titles. Um. Wow, I actually made it to the boss? Oh, you gotta be freaking kidding me. Seriously, dude. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the first three Sonic games and Knuckles are like... top-tier games in my eyes. Like, they're really, really good games. Wow! Um... And then I, I lumped Sonic CD in with those as well. I just, I love all those games. Like, the original core Sonic games. Oh my god, seriously. Hey, Harrison, welcome back. And Christopher! I mean, this is all sorts of tedious. <laughs> There we go. That's it. Oh, 
And he's got a bunch of different patterns, it looks like. Yeah, by the way, there's no spin dash in this game. Hey, events. Interesting level. You have to fling yourself up. Which is a little awkward. Oh, it looks like you just hold right. That's it. Okay, cool. Sonic 1 enemies. Yeah, I really like the music in this game, too. Oh, secret. I can definitely use that after that freaking last level we just played. Oh, that boss stage was horrible. Okay, so these spikes kill you instantly, apparently. Uh, Monolith, it's probably just like the NES, where, uh, you know, when too many objects are layered on the same lines, uh, you know, to display them, it has to, like, alternate their display. Or alternate their... I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I'm terrible at explaining this type of shit. Um, stuff, I mean... Basically, one frame, a, one sprite will be rendered, on the other frame, the other sprite will be rendered, and they just... Every other frame, you know, they're, they're displaying on and off, so you get a flickery thing. Ba well, you basically get flicker. You know, it's just like the NES. The Master System seems like it handles it better than NES, though. You don't get as much flicker on Master System games. Yeah, like, you saw it with the, um... The minecart. As I like, was landing in the minecart, you could see them, them flickering. Okay, you know what? So, these aren't instant death spikes. I think what happened is I got an extra life with rings, and, um... I got an extra life with rings, which put me at zero rings. <laughs> and then I touched a spike, and that's how I died. Sonic's headbanging. Like, you can't see sprites behind the transparency of other sprites. Oh, okay. Uh-oh. Yeah, a lot of flicker right there. <laughs> I, I don't let that stuff bother me. You know, some people have a hard time playing these older games because of things like flicker, but I just find it more interesting knowing why it it flickers, you know? Yeah, so much trial and error. Pfft. 
<laughs> Seriously, game? Now you're just trolling me. Trolling me hardcore. Yeah, Sonic 2 definitely trolls a lot more than Sonic 1. Trolly game. Trolly trolly. Oh, I didn't know that the that uh, studio actually did uh, these games. I know Yuzo Koshiro did the the music of at least the first game. Did he do the music of this one too? But I didn't realize uh, the rest of the team actually made these as well. That explains their high quality. This is something I wish more Master System games did as well. Like you see, like the little light effects down below. It's a simple way of. Um, it's a simple way of, uh, you know, just sprucing up, like, the visuals and making things look interesting. Like, again, not a lot of Master System games did, like, parallax scrolling and stuff like that. Or even line scrolling, so... Just having, like, those little lights flashing up makes things look more interesting. A decent conveyor belt effect. Not as good as Batman's on NES, but still pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, so this is our boss level. Um... I think I did the wrong thing! Yeah, I could use some spike-breaking armor in this, Ronnie. That'd be nice. I think you're supposed to have that go up, and then it comes back down. Yeah. But I went so far off screen, I despawned it. Mm. Yeah, I have to hit him when his spikes are gone. Yeah, it is, Vince. It is a gorgeous game. I agree. I mean, even like the, the stage introductions, like, I love the visual design on those. Hey, Zach, welcome back. Yeah, it's a pretty chill tune. It's actually, now that you guys mentioned the Streets of Rage guys, it's actually got, like, a Streets of Rage vibe to it, musically. Dude, <sighs> yeah, like the scrolling behind the uh, the text is is really cool. Yeah, and the bummer is that like you've got to do the whole stage over again just to get back to try the boss again. But yeah, I'll get to my first game over, and then uh, you know if I fail, then I fail. But yeah, I'll get to my first game over, then we'll play something else.
Yeah, the timing is a little tight. If you hit him right in the ass, it's like you don't bounce off. And then you get killed because you're you're basically touching him when you land. Hey, boss and burf, welcome back. And I don't know if it's Sonic times one means I'm on my last life, or if it means I have one life left. <coughs> I guess we're gonna find out. Stupid rock. And that's it. Well, that was a good attempt for not having played this game, and I haven't played that in a long time, actually. Not for more than like a minute or two. Oh, hey, Roger. Welcome back. Oh, man. It's actually kind of a shame I didn't get to show off like the last level of the game. It's just, ugh. it's not a not a fun level. It's like a tube puzzle. You got to go through the right tubes. Some of them lead you to uh, to, <laughs> to spikes, and you die. It's uh, it's rough. Yeah, there's Tails Monolith. He gets kidnapped. It's actually kind of funny because it shows him in the introductions for each level, but he's technically kidnapped by Robotnik, I guess. <laughs> That's right, Robotnik. What's what he used to be called. Um, Alright, uh, I think I'm going to take another uh, break. Uh, I'm going to use the bathroom again. I've been pounding down a lot of liquid. And then um, maybe grab a snack because I'm, I'm pretty hungry. But give me like five minutes and I'll be right back.
All right. I am back. Scrolling up through chat. Oh, yeah. The two puzzle broke my resolve. Yeah. The two puzzle is just, uh, you know, it could be memorized, but it's, it's not, it's not fun. Roger asks, can I transfer a save from 360 to Xbox One? Uh, if you have... Well, I, I think this... Uh, I think this might have been changed, but if you had Xbox Live Gold, you can upload your save to the cloud. And then download it to Xbox One, and vice versa. And Leo says, now it's free. Okay. Yeah, it used to be locked to a gold subscription. Okay, cool. Julie's enjoying the uh, the petting as I scroll back through chat. Okay, Leo's Leo's got it on lockdown. Leo knows his Xbox stuff. She's a good girl. Yeah, she slept for like the last hour and a half. She just woke back up when I uh, took a break. Who would pet kitties if humans didn't have hands? Well, I mean, we don't need hands. We would just pet them with something else, right? Maybe use like the backside of our arm. Or we just give them lots of kisses. Yeah, just give them kisses. <laughs> yeah, we'd, we'd pet them with our stumps. <laughs> All right. All right, let's see what I've got up my sleeve. <clears throat> Yeah, Europe got uh, a lot more games than North America did. All right, Ninja Gaiden. Mario loves Sonic Blast. Interesting. Roger loves Sonic Spinball. Nice.
All right. Yeah, this is a, a new Ninja Gaiden by Sega. And it's, I don't know. A lot of people love this one. I didn't care for it that much, but I try to go back to it, you know, every now and then to potentially do a let's play of it. Oh, wow, Ronnie, you knew no one with the Master System. That's crazy. Yeah, outside of my two neighbors that had one, I never met anyone else that had one until I was, like, in middle school, and that's how I ended up getting a bunch of, like, my first cartridges. Yeah, I remember actually streaming this one many years ago on YouTube, and uh, I remember having like vertical screen screen transitions and I would do the transition and then bump right into an enemy it's like there's some really poor like level design but we're gonna we're gonna roll with it for a little bit and definitely one of the nicer looking master system games that's for sure all right let's go ahead and use that it's up and attack just like um, the NES Julie's playing with her toys again. I can hear her. Yeah, that's a homing shot. Ronnie! Ooh. You have to be careful here, because I'm pretty sure those spikes basically act as like an endless pit. Yeah, thanks for joining up as a channel member, Ronnie. I appreciate that. Alright, it's just a standard shuriken. Ow. I don't like the iframes either. The NES games don't have iframes on bosses, so you can just wail on them. I think he doesn't do much damage though. He's just doing one block of health. Double dipping now, Patreon and YouTube. Yeah, thanks a lot, Ronnie. Would I ever team up with Bithead1? Uh, or Bithead1000? Uh, I don't know who that is. I feel like I vaguely heard the name before, but... So I guess my answer would be no, because I don't really know them? <laughs> uh, Sega logos in a, in a Ninja Gaiden game. I love it. You know, another one I also enjoyed was the Game Gear... Ninja Gaiden. It's very different. Short and fun. Also made by Sega. Oh, that's right, you can wall jump in this. I forgot about that. Although it's a little too easy to do it. Yeah, these little dudes look a little derpy. Oh, there's a platform right there. Alright, so this is the fire shield, I believe. down the jump on. Ow. Oh, 
Okay, that's some weird last- that's some really weird level design. Really hard to get that. Yeah, I'm starting to remember why I, I didn't care for this game that much. The first level seems pretty solid, but like from this one and on, the level design gets just awkward. Although this building stuff is kind of reminiscent of the original arcade game. I wonder if they were influenced by that at all. Geez, stop running at me and jumping. Okay. Oh, pfft. Oh, man. The graphics remind you of Duke Nukem 1 for PC. Yeah, a little bit. So you have those, like, crates at the beginning of uh, this level. Vince says, yeah, with those arcades closing, I only want to visit Japan half as much now. Yeah. Does the HUD kind of look like Shinobi? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, it's a little bit closer to, say, NES Ninja Gaiden. Wow, that's a big throwing star. How nice it cuts through multiple enemies. It's pretty powerful, too. I do like you get a lot of Ninpo in this, though. And that is... that is nice. Not gonna lie. Ugh. Double ah. Uh. Shame you can't, like, move across these like you can in Ninja, Ninja Gaiden 3. I just realized this game came out... I did it again. I just realized this game came out after Ninja Gaiden 3. Whew. Wow, so I start with this weapon, huh? I'd rather keep this weapon. It's better than the other ones. Yeah, it would have been a lot better if you could move back and forth like you can in Ninja Gaiden 3. Are you kidding me, dude? I could just do that. You don't even have to jump. <laughs> Bird demic. Way too many birds. I mean, this throwing star is so much more powerful. Like, why would I want to use the other sub weapons? I could see maybe wanting to use like the homing fireballs. Man, my my starting shuriken's better than like the other shuriken I can get. Kills those guys in one hit. All right, this is going to be a pain. Um, that- are you serious? That hurts me? Why? Oh, this level design sucks. <laughs> Sorry to be negative right now, but damn. Just why? It's so clunky. Ugh. It's just frustrating because this came out after all three Ninja items on NES. Like, they had a, so much to work off of. It's, it's just questionable level design and game design, that's all. And you gotta wait for the iframes, too. This is 
literally all I have to do, huh? Welcome back. <laughs> my cat's on my desk now. Was this targeted towards Brazilians? It was not. Uh, it was the Euro European market. I mean, this is where, uh, the European market is where it got released, so. Deep into a Master System game like this before, oh, I think I was playing, uh, I think I was playing Shinobi on the Game Gear, Leo. That was like a year ago. Hi, Patchouli. She's just talking at me. Can you guys hear her? <laughs> hey, Joshua. Hi, Logan. Yeah, what, what got me on Shinobi on Game Gear is, like, I think it's the final level. Is, like, just this puzzle stage. And I was like, yeah, I, I'm... I, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, there's my regular shuriken. Now it's I have a weak shuriken. Yeah, and I, I still want to go back and try to learn that final level, but I, I couldn't figure it out. Like, I'm going to have to actually refer to a walkthrough. Yeah, that was that was like actually Leo, that was a a long time ago. I don't even think that was on the Mister. I think that was on my Mega SG. I went through a Game Gear phase on the Mega SG, because that was one of the reasons why I wanted the Mega SG at the time. Was so I could do Game Gear stuff. Yeah, those instant screen transitions are also kind of weird, too. Like, the NES Ninja Gaiden, you go through a door, like, it'll fade out and then fade back in. But this just, like, switches instantly. This level is a lot more straightforward than the last one is, or last one was. So this is this is more fun. Well, was a lot more straightforward. <laughs> uh, Ronnie, I, I actually just saw your question a little while ago. I totally forgot to respond. I have not played Considing yet. Oh, okay. I don't know if I am, because I, I play that a lot on my channel. Whenever I do Master System, I love to play that game. That's also one of my other favorite Master System games, is Kinsaden. Wow, you got a game over. Which actually makes sense, because we died to birds a bunch of times. I'll go ahead and continue. Yeah, no, it's all good, Leo. I mean, the thing is, is that... I've streamed a lot, too, and you've watched a lot of my streams, so, yeah, it's... And we've we've done a lot in the last couple of years in particular with all these FPGA consoles and whatnot. A lot of it starts to just blend together. Of course, the enemies respawn. That's typical for Apic games. I guess the B stands for bonus points. Ugh. You know, I can't complain about bats in this game. The original NES games have a ton of them. Actually, you know what? These, these fireballs are probably... Well, I don't know. These fireballs, they use a lot of Nimpo. It's like 40. Yeah, it's 40.
Yeah, that guy just blends in with those rocks. I mean, thankfully enemies don't really do much damage, though. That is nice. So you can take a lot of hits. Hey, Mike! Welcome back! Cigarette asks, any snow in Virginia yet? Uh, no. Not yet. I'm gonna actually pause it. Uh... Deadly Gaming's been doing music stuff again, too. Hell yeah. Very nice, man. Saboteur says, I actually like these graphics. It looks good. Yeah, it is a good-looking game. It is definitely a good-looking game, for sure. I'd say it's not as good looking as, you know, the NES games, because they, they have, uh, especially Ninja Gaiden 3, has like a lot of parallax and line scrolling and stuff like that. It's pretty, pretty nice. Uh, but uh, yeah, this looks nice and colorful. I really like the first level in particular, like the trees had animations, you know, like making them look like they were swaying in the wind. It was really cool. Uh, let's see. Well, the problem with Ego with the homing attack is it uses 40 points on your Ninpo bar, uh, top left. So I only have two more uses right now. Whereas if I had the throwing star, it only used like 10. So I could have used that way more. <laughs> Mike says he still remembers his first Master System game. It was Teddy Boy. It sucked. <laughs> Teddy Boy, uh... I don't know. I think I played that uh, a year or two ago. I was dabbling with it. I thought it was pretty fun. It's like a basic, simple arcade style game. Might have even been an arcade game, actually. Now that I think about it. I think it was. Um, Sean's had some uh, nighttime flurries in Iowa. Nice. Leo got an inch today. Oh, wow. First snow that amounted to anything this winter. Boston Burp had a very light dusting over Thanksgiving. Yeah, okay. So I got my shuriken back. So I can use this a lot more. It's, it's more useful. Yeah, you got like stars in the background flickering. That's good. And it does the uh, Sonic 2 thing where you've got foreground layers. Uh, I think that's... I can't tell if that's a weapon. I think it's a weapon. I don't want to switch weapons. Man, that's just cheap. I hate stuff like that. Ugh. Oh, you can crawl. Well, or walk on your knees. It's like Castlevania 4. Shinobi is really good on Master System, Gary. And Double Dragon was really fun for the time. Yeah, Hang On and Safari Home was a nice little cartridge, too. I still love going back. I already said it once tonight, but I love going back and playing uh, Hang On. <laughs> Mike has incredibly high Ninpo for his age. <laughs> oh, man. Wow, these things just, they... What the hell am I supposed to do there? Um, let's see. Uh... This is so stupid. And then I, I take a hit and then I end up wall jumping when I don't want to. Dude, it's so janky. I'm not trying to wall jump. <sighs> okay, I have to... I see what's going on. Yeah, boss of burp. I mean, like I said, this is... I'm, remem I'm remembering very quickly why I did not care for this game that much. Ugh! 
It's just, ah, oh, it's so weird. I mean, now that I kind of know what to do, it'll be a lot better on a second playthrough, you know? Oh shit, I didn't want to switch like that. That's fine. The fire shield here is, is good. It uses a lot of Nimpo. And actually, speaking of which, I should probably use it here. So who knows when the birds will appear? All right, boss time? Yeah, boss time. Jeez. Now I wish I had a projectile. Dude, this boss design is just it's something, all right. I had to wait and then attack. This game... <sighs> I keep... I'm not, like, turning around fast enough to, to jump, and so I end up jumping backwards, which is like a slow jump. Which, actually, you can do that in Ninja Gaiden 3. Oh, I see! <laughs> I was making it way harder on myself. One, just jump! It's like, hey, dummy, use the wall jump. It's actually useful. There we go. That's actually not too bad. <laughs> you need a backdash button. <laughs> Imagine if there was a backdash and you had to press jump and attack at the same time, like it's double dragon on NES. Oh, nice, Sean. Dude, that video is super old. That's, that's like... That video is like seven or eight years old now, I think. Maybe even older. I'd be like nine. <laughs> it's, it's pretty old. Okay, whoa, I got super lucky there. Lots of bonus points. Ladder. Oh, yep. Ugh. I remember this. Oh, do not like, do not like one bit. It's such weird scroll locations too. Like they want me to get down and do a wall jump and then attack it at the same time. Okay, good. Those don't respawn. Good to know. And, of course, it was something I didn't want. It's fine. Yeah, I really like the homing property, but... It uses way too much Ninpo. Ah, I'm dead. Yeah, I, I love Gangster Town. Um, that's actually another one of my favorite Master System games. One thing that the Master System definitely did better than NES was light gun games. 
The Master System has quite a few of them, and the the like on a Master System was way more responsive and snappy. Uh oh. And I'm out of Ninpo completely. Oh. Of course, the birds are behind. I can't see them. <laughs> in the NES game, the birds are in front of everything, so they never they never go behind objects. You can always see the birds. Sorry to be making so many comparisons to the NES games, but I'm just kind of like verbalizing why aspects of this game are, are really annoying. There we go. Mm, now I'm gonna stick with this one. Oops. Yeah, I just realized, I remembered actually, you can, um, you have like a screen clearing bomb, but I think, yeah, <laughs> you lose a third of your health bar. It's just, it's insane. I mean, I guess it could be useful, but you can also do it by accident. That's how I've figured out how to do it. You just press button one and two together, buttons one and two together. I will say the wall jump could be useful. I, you know, I'm saving myself a bunch because of it. It's like, there, there are some good mechanics here, but then there's some bad mechanics. Oh, like bumping into that guy off screen, I didn't even see him. I was like, why don't I get bumped back? And then I saw him fall down afterwards. Gary says, uh, Lycan games were definitely awesome. His friend had a bunch of them, so most of the ones you play were at his house. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I love Gangster Town in particular, like, because it's really fast-paced. There, there are a lot of enemies. And, uh, you know, the bonus stages where you're busting through, uh, you know, the bricks and stuff like that. It's really fun. The Safari Hunt is, you know, honestly, it's more interesting than Duck Hunt. You know, there are a lot more objects to shoot at. Uh, marksman shooting and trap shooting is actually really fun as well. And then, uh, I think there's shooting gallery. And then there's one where, um... God, I forgot what the name of, uh, the name of it was. I did a Let's Play of that one, too. Uh... Where... It's like these guys on, uh, mine carts. You have to, like, shoot enemies that are, that are... Um, trying to, you know, track them down. And you have to shoot, like, objects on the track as well to make sure the minecart doesn't explode or something like that. Um, I did, I'm pretty sure I did a Let's Play of that way back in the day as well. And, uh... Yeah, like I said, Master System got some really fun like on games. Way better than NES like on games. Oh, and I think there's actually a Master System version of Operation Wolf as well. Come to think of it, I think that was European only. Egos, it's time to sleep. Have a good one. Yeah, have a good one, Ego. Sleep well. The cutscenes in an NES Ninja Gaiden were directed by Masato Kato. Uh, the scenario writer for Chrono Trigger. Very nice. I, I love the story in the first Ninja Gaiden. I didn't I didn't personally feel like the story was very good in parts two or three. Um, but Ninja Gaiden part one, it like the pacing was really good and uh, you know, it was well, I don't know. I just feel like the execution of it was really solid. Yep, stupid bird. Ugh. And the bird just keeps coming back. Yeah, that's, that's real frustrating. And they're so fast in this one, too. Rescue mission. Yep, that's the game. Thanks, Sean. And I feel like there might have been some other Leica games that I haven't really messed around with Little Master System. Now I want to look into it.
All right. Okay. Cool. Oh, man. Boss time. This is all he's gonna do. That's pretty easy, actually. <laughs> Mixing it up. He's still only doing one block of health. Oh, actually, if he touches me, it's two. Okay. I can basically just tank. Tank, tank, tank. Tank, tank, tank is a Wii U game. I need to revisit that and play it. <laughs> hey, Pearl Jabber. Yeah, we're playing Master System, not NES. <laughs> Wow, NES looks great on the mister. Oh yeah, for those of you guys wondering, I actually managed to turn off my sharpening filter I had applied, so this master system looks better than our uh, NES stream did the other night. Never thought about interfacing a Wiimote to the Mister for light gun games. Obviously a different style experience, but apparently a lot of Mister games go that route for light gun games. Oh, I'm not sure how to do that, Leo. Oh my god, these ice physics. Holy shit. <laughs> you press right once and he just goes all the way across. Can you fall off? Yep. <laughs> okay, I do not like these ice physics. That's, that's really lazy ice physics. Mike says, to the earth on NES. It's really good. Nice. Yeah, I, I actually own that mic, but I haven't played it yet. Yeah, these ice physics are terrible. <laughs> Ninja Gaiden 2 on NES is like, you know, much more realistic. Like, you kind of speed up real slow. This is just, you just start flying the second you press right. It's gonna have to just, like, do a lot of jumping straight up, I guess. What is that? <laughs> okay. Whoa there. Good. Uh oh. Yeah, you really do not want to jump backwards. Like, you just... It's like this right here. It's... It's a lot like Ninja Gaiden 3 in that regard. You can just kind of get caught in place, basically, and then take damage or land in a pit or something. What the hell? Are you serious? There's a dude in the snow. <laughs> oh man, this game. It is a piece of work, alright. How do you get Wiimotes to connect with, with to USB or their adapters? Okay, so Leo says he's not sure how it's done, but he suspects you need a USB Bluetooth receiver dongle to connect the Wiimote to. And a wireless sensor bar. Okay. Hmm. 
No ice physics. Oh no, there's still ice physics. Look. <laughs> this is so it's, it's it's really dumb. <laughs> Even when you slide, you go oh, you go crazy. Oh man. Why did they why? Again, like the I'm giving this, like, an extra hard time because this came out after Ninja Gaiden 3. <laughs> they had three games of quality to work to work off of as, like, a basis, and they just kind of botched it. Mm. I mean, it's still a fun game. I know I would like it a lot more if I actually got good at it, but definitely some questionable design choices here. Yeah, I really do feel like this shuriken, this like upgraded shuriken, is probably the best sub weapon in the game. Because it kills these two hit enemies in one hit. It cuts through multiple enemies, and it doesn't use that much ninpo. Like I can use it 57 more times right now. It's like I don't even need to rely on my sword. This game definitely has more, like, preci precision platformer elements as well. Yeah, I don't want that. <laughs> Ninja Garden! <laughs> uh, probably boss time. It seems like they drop health before bosses a lot. Really? Ice blocks? Man, it's so threatening, those ice blocks. Ah, crap. That was my fault. We are having to continue a lot, but, you know... Oh, all the way back here. We are making progress, at least. Yeah, thankfully it doesn't start me at the very beginning of the level. Ah, crap. Mm. I mean, this will actually come in handy on this boss fight. It's funny, like, this still uses more Ninpo than that Shuriken did. Oh, I didn't want to get that. This boss is going to be a lot harder now. No! Okay, that was my fault. Totally my fault. Hey, Aaron! Welcome back.
close. There we go, we got him. Model says, fun fact, in college, I programmed the curling game from WarioWare on an FPGA. Nice. <laughs> you got the- Aaron said he, he found the greatest find in the world. He got the largest consumer CRT TV, Sony Trinitron 40 inch, in perfect condition. Nice. I have a 32 inch. It's, it's a big boy. I can't even imagine what the 40 inch looks like. That would be amazing to have. Yay, no more awful ice physics. I'm not normally one of those people that complains about ice physics. I actually kind of like them because it adds for some interesting movement tech. But not in this game. <laughs> the ice physics here are just not fun to work with. All right, tiny shuriken. Okay. Now we're finally starting to deal with more like monster type enemies too. Ah, oh, shit, it's a. Ugh. Dead again. Yeah, total trial and error stage. It's gonna take a while to get decent at this one. <laughs> Guys, they just dig their way up. Actually, some music. Uh oh. What? They respawn? Come on! I didn't even push the screen over that far. Oh. This is just. Ugh. This is just mean. See, now I wish I had the fire shield. It would make that part a lot easier. could be useful. Maybe. We'll see. Uh oh, okay. Ugh. Yeah, Uber Disco, I agree. Yeah, the VGA CRT is a really nice... I, 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 I really tell people, I'm like, hey, man, if you want uh, something like a PVM, maybe consider just a VGA monitor. You have to use a scaler with them, unless you're using something like a Mister, which can just, you know, output VGA. Or output to a VGA monitor. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, I, I, I prefer the look of, you know, my VGA monitor over the, the PVM I had. Um, it's really nice. 
and, you know, VGA monitors are a lot easier to find. Hey, maybe I can get through this part with this weapon. I don't like this level. Just gonna say it now. Those fire fireballs, I just can't really do anything about them. Yeah, well, the thing is, Uber, I was talking about it earlier. You're not gonna really get the dithering slash blending look properly unless you're using, like, an older CRT that's not a Trinitron. <laughs> Because, like, on my, my flat display Trinitrons... Alright, that's it. I'm not dealing with this level anymore. But my flat display Trinitrons, like, even with Composite or RF, and even when I turn, like, the blur, like, uh, like or the sharpening functionality, like, all the way off, like, I still see the, uh... I still see, like, the dithering. <laughs> I still see the pixels. Uh, because, like, the modern... Like, these screens are so crisp. So, like, you really, really want that dithered look, man. You need, like, a, a TV that doesn't use the Trinitron technology, and it's got to be older, and you've got to, like, run RF into it. You know, seriously, no joke. But Uber, I will say, if you run, like, the Mister into a consumer CRT with component, man, those scan lines are chunky. They look really good. Oh, sorry to hear that, Pearl Jammer. Yeah, I, I have a Philips one as well. Um, I don't remember when mine was manufactured. It, it was after 2000. But yeah, it looks really awesome. Yeah, the, the cool thing about uh, doing this on the Mister is I've got a lot of, like, choices. Just scrolling through my list. Just bear with me here. Yeah, Jurassic Park did come out on Master System. Okay. I kind of wonder how that is. I'm going to assume it's probably not not great. <laughs> it's a version... well... No, I'm not gonna try it. Probably doesn't have in-game music. Europe got a game called 
battle outrun. I don't think I've ever messed around with that. Hmm. Okay. Well, I haven't done any classic Alex Kid. It seems like sacrilege to not do Alex Kid, right? <laughs> Yeah, Pearl, Pearl Jammer, we actually played Sonic 2 already. And Sonic 1. Uh, but yeah. Are those big box PC games in that white cabinet? Uh, yes. They, they are, actually, Pearl Jammer. Ugh. Yep, about three shelves worth. From uh, basically all the way up there, and then I had my Windows XP box right there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, big box PC games were my thing. Were because they're stupid expensive now, <laughs> like everything is. Uh. This is the most, uh... We've had... The most patchouli we've had in a while. Alright, so let's play some Alex Kidd. Really like this game, but I hate the Jenkin matches. Apparently, the rock, paper, scissors stuff... Apparently, there's, like, rhythm and rhyme to it, but, uh... I haven't figured it out. Alright, we're gonna pause the game. We're gonna go ahead and use that. It's so much nicer just pausing it from the controller as opposed to having to, uh... You know, reach... <laughs> reach over to the console. I always... You know, like... One of the things about, like, having to reach over to the console is every time... I go to reset the... Uh, or, or go to... Sorry. Pause the game or go to my menu... I think I might, like, press the wrong button, or I might nudge the console accidentally. And then, um, like, freeze my game or something. It always, like, freaks me out when I try to press the pause button on a Master System console. Of course I missed that. Another super colorful game. Unfortunately, you cannot, like, can't pull a Mario. Oh, you can, sort of. I was gonna say, uh, where you, you run, then duck, and you'll sort of slide a little bit as you duck. What about Street Fighter 2 in the Master System? Yeah, that's... No, I, I don't like that game very much. Yeah, we're not gonna play that. <laughs> uh, we're actually not gonna do any fighting games. Like, there's Mortal Kombat, which I, I enjoy, but, uh... I remember we did a uh, Mortal Kombat variety stream about a year ago. Where it was all uh, Genesis, uh, Game Gear, and Master System Mortal Kombats. Ooh, extra life. Nice. Do, do, do. All right. We'll go ahead and buy everything. You never played uh, Alex Kidd in, in Miracle World? This is like a Master System staple. This is like playing a Nintendo Entertainment System and never playing Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> it's like you gotta play Alex Kidd if you got a Master System. Alright, so I don't know the solution here. Seeing that dithering actually makes me think about, like, dithered, uh, 
effects on my Trinitrons. See, now I actually kind of want to go back, pop the Ineos in the co composite, and then, um... And then, like, really intentionally lower, like, the, the sharpening on everything. You know? Oh, uh, he thought it looked like it was for little kids at the time. Well, I mean, it probably was. But, yeah, it's still, it's still a really fun game. Yeah, it is the built-in game on certain Master Systems, yep. That was one of the, the great features about the Master System, is having a built-in game. Like, that snail maze game that we had over here was still pretty fun. And then later models, I think, had Hang On, and then, um... Others had Alex Kidd, uh, the first one here. Weren't there some, like, Master System Model 2s that had Sonic the Hedgehog built in? I don't remember. Yeah, so if you... Destroy all those guys' arm pieces, you can actually access a secret. Well, you're supposed to? Maybe it's another one. Yeah, it's not working. I guess I have to do a different one. Master System had no built-in game? I thought all Master Systems had a built-in game. Like this- okay, so the Snail Maze game? You had to press, a, like, a couple buttons on the uh, main screen to even access it. It was more- it was more hidden. Huh. It's not working. Interesting. Like, I want to say they all at least had the snail maze in it, but again, it's not something. It's not something that accesses accesses itself. You have to do a button combination to to go to it, and you might not have known that combination. Yeah, deadly. The uh, the ones with like hang on and, and whatnot and and on they they just load the games automatically. The snail maze game did not load automatically. Oops! I meant to grab that little helicopter and I. Oh, okay. I didn't have to grab it. Okay, cool. Alright, so you can try to get a lot of money here, but I tried not to go for it because if you hit the ceiling, your helicopter basically like breaks and falls and you fall into the water. I'd rather not do the water if I can avoid it. Maybe it's this level where you can get like a secret area with the octopuses. I'm not sure. Wow, that was lucky.
Nice. You don't even have to touch the water. shop. Extra life. Okay. So I'm kind of forced to use this if I get it. Money. Nice, another extra life. All right, there we go. Oh, that's right, it's an actual boss. Rastan speedrun, no. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to play Rastan tonight. I think I did a Master System variety stream a year or two ago and I played that. Ugh. And like, Rastan gets, it gets really hard. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The, the end of this level has a Jenkin match. Jenkin. the derpy enemies. Uh oh, not good, not good. <laughs> yeah, I thought the way he was going to track me was going to be different. We need a lot of extra lives, though. Uh-oh. Yeah, you don't want to touch those skull tiles. You pretty much... I don't know if you die, or if you, uh... I don't remember if you die or if you make, like, a Grim Reaper appear. I, th I feel like you just die. Alright, another, uh, Jenkin match. <laughs> Surprise guest character, the bull from Karate Champ! <laughs> yeah, I forgot that you, you can fight a bull in that game. The arcade version.
Yeah, apparently there's... There's a set pattern for these guys, and I, I don't know what it is. So, that's something I've always meant to do with this game, is, is look up a walkthrough for, for these parts specifically. Yeah, um... Years ago, I thought that this was just completely random. But someone was, was like, really telling me, like, no, it's, it's actually set. There's a set pattern. You just have to know what it is. So, you know, I, I took their word for it. So I definitely need to look this up. His head is scissors, yeah. Yeah, all all these bosses here, uh Oh crap. Yeah, all these bosses have uh heads based around, you know, certain formations like scissors or fists or rock or paper. That's Alex Kidd in Miracle World. Yeah, so I'm trying to see if there's a solution online. <sighs> You've always wanted me to play Gyrus on NES. You should have been on Twitch. I think I played it just the other night. Yeah, Gyrus is uh Gyrus is cool. I like it. No, I, I, I know that. I know how to play rock, paper, scissors, Scarlet. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the pattern for the boss so I pick the right choice. Because if you don't pick the right choice, you die. And I'm almost running out of lives, so. Uh, what do I know about Ghost House and Master System? Uh, I have a Let's Play of it. Uh, I think it's a really fun game. I don't know about it being a sequel to anything, but uh, it's a cool game. Y 
Yeah, Sean, I know you can see the AI's thoughts with the, the power up. Um, Okay, let's see. Scissors, paper. I don't know if this is gonna work, but we'll see. this right. Okay. It's just, I just got lucky. That's all it was. Uh, whatever. Whatever. I wonder how many lives I have left. Let's see. I still have two lives. I don't know what this power-up does here. Oh! Okay. <laughs> Little tiny Alex's. That's interesting. Definitely don't know what that does. What? Oh, if you hit the uh, skulls of the bike, you lose control. That's rough. All right, well, let's use, uh... what does this do? <laughs> I float. You'll float too. Ah. It doesn't make you invincible. That's a bummer. <laughs> yeah, it dispenses lemmings. <laughs> oh, man. Alrighty. I want to actually turn on the FM sound, and we will play... Uh, Alex Kidd, The Lost Stars. Which is, uh, I believe, supports the FM sound. I did a let's play of this, but I wasn't using the FM sound. So we'll do a quick ish run of this. It's not really simple, but it's a fun game. Simple game, but fun. Now what's funny is the, the arcade version of this is actually on the Mister as well. I've always wanted to put more time into that. But yeah, this is a port of an arcade game. The Master System one is way, way easier. The arcade game is pretty challenging. You can get shots. I don't really need to be playing this. I do have multiple Let's Plays of this on my channel. But we're just kind of chilling and having fun, so... And this is uh, one of those games I think actually sounds... Uh, yeah, pretty chill with the FM sound. Yeah, you've got a health meter up top. Whoops. Yeah, every level has the sort of boss bosses. They're not really bosses. They're more like obstacles. 
And if you take a hit, you get pushed back to the left-hand side of the screen. So you gotta be able to go through the little boss section without taking a hit. Yeah, yeah, Sean, it still uses the original Scream. <laughs> it's not being generated with uh, the FM. Yeah, when I hear the FM sound on Master System, I feel like I'm playing an MS-DOS game. playing like Hocus Pocus or something <laughs> or like just one of those Apogee plat platformers a uh, later version of Commander Keen Deal. First try. Oh man, how long have we been streaming? Almost five hours. Okay. Just another five hours to go. No, not really. I'm not gonna stream that long. <laughs> it's already 2 a.m. my time. I probably want to be out of here in like the next hour to hour and a half. I do want to make some dinner. Because I'm hungry. Um, and chill out to some like TV or something for a little bit. Because I don't want to sleep like all day tomorrow. I need to get back, try to get back on a more normal sleep schedule. But lately I've been staying up to like 6 a.m. and sleeping until 2 or 3, which is not good. His scream seems to sound a little bit clearer. I wonder if that's because of the FM. Or maybe I'm just like... I don't know. Hearing things that aren't actually there. Nice. First try. This music definitely sounds like something you'd hear in an Apogee game. <laughs> I know, this came out uh, a couple of years before that. Hey, Raymond, thank you very much for that. Thanks for the awesome stream and staying up late. Thank you, Raymond. Wait.
Yeah, thanks again, Raymond. Savator says, dude, great stream. It's my time for worms on Dreamcast. Catch you later. All right, see you, Savator. You playing uh, Worms Armageddon or Worms World Party? They're both really fun. Get all slow down. Just wait for these guys. Yeah, so this game has like, uh... Jeez, it's like six levels or something. Um, you go through them, then you play a final stage, and then the game loops. You do it again, but the second time around, it's harder. The second loop is definitely more interesting. Let's see what we can do here. All right, we got it. Good. Donkey Kong water levels ripped off Alex Kidd, for sure. <laughs> or... Alex Kidd's water levels ripped off Jungle Hunt. And Pitfall. Hey, Ghost. Welcome back. Uh, Leah, what Worms games came out to Xbox Live? Were they like, did they do any of the 2D ones, or was it just all 3D Worms games? Flicker. <laughs> yeah, they must have, uh... Ah, oh, I always mess that up my first try. Yeah, you don't want to hold down the jump button. It's just so chill. I love it. Man. There we go. Three 2D Worms games were made for 360. Worms, Worms 2 Armageddon, and Worms Revolution. Really? I didn't know that. I didn't realize those were brought out to 360. Bonk ripped off this level, too. <laughs> mm -mm. What I'm probably going to do is just finish the first loop, and then I'll, I'll switch to a different game. Because, like I said, I've got a full playthrough of this on my channel. Two full playthroughs, actually. Yeah, I want to say Alex Kidd uh, Lost Stars was one of my last Let's Plays before I changed the format. 
So it was like, it was probably about a year ago, I think I did it. Ziggurat! Yeah, stage seven. Definitely my favorite tune in the game. It's very chill. Very funky. Uh oh. <laughs> it spells GWOW. <laughs> what I get for just constantly running. Running and jumping. Alright, don't want to touch those spikes. These are ice physics that make more sense, you know, than Ninja Gaiden's ice physics. We played Ninja Gaiden on Master System for anybody just joining us, and it had some wild ice physics. Not of the good kind. Alright, so this is our little boss area. Ah, oh, damn. Alright, we got it. My adaptability has inspired you in some of your own playing now. Hell yeah. Uh, Scarlet, no, Kid Chameleon I do not think had a Master System version. I don't think it did. I'll Google, I'll Google it real quick. Yeah, it's just Genesis. That is a game I want to learn how to complete. I hear it's uh, I hear it's pretty tough. All right. Yeah, so that's Alex Kid. Um Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of other games that use the uh, FM. So Double Dragon does. We'll uh, we'll mess around with that real quick. Just so you can hear the FM sound, then I'll switch back to the PSG, and then we'll we'll play something else. It's a cat in a box. 
You skipped out on the Ninja Gaiden. You love that version. Yeah, these sound effects are very different. I mean, you're 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 probably thinking of the the same game, Scarlet. Because a lot of people seem to like the Ninja Gaiden on Master System, although I'm beginning to wonder how many of those people have actually tried to finish it. <laughs> or if they just played like the first or second level and that's it. It's got some uh, pretty aggravating level design. Nice and flickery. Yeah, I, I will say the FM sounds probably the better soundtrack for Double Dragon. Man, the collision in this game, though, just leaves a lot to be desired. One of the big issues I've always had with Double Dragon on Master System is that, um... Like, you'll punch enemies, you'll hit them with weapons, and they don't, like, they don't get stunned or anything. Yeah, there's like a, there's a real disconnect between what you're doing, you know, like, the buttons you're pressing, and, like, how the enemies react. Oh. oh, come on, I wasn't trying to elbow. I was trying to jump kick. Oh, yeah. You need the path, Ch Kid Chameleon, otherwise you'll loop levels. Seriously? Oh, man. It's got that sort of mechanic. Uh, well, thanks for the heads up, because I do want to eventually learn that game. Yeah, the boss music sounds really cool here. Yeah, speaking of Ninja Gaiden on Master System, I'm gonna have to go back and watch like a long play and see what uh, see what other players do on that fire level. Takes so many hits. Yeah, 
I actually do wonder how powerful the elbow is here. And I wish I wish I kind of knew a good consistent way of uh, grabbing these enemies by the head. Ow, that was my fault. Yeah, like I have no idea how I did that. So if we have a box marked Sega, are we like throwing master systems at these guys? I haven't really thought about that till now. I wonder if like they're meant to be game consoles. <laughs> Fun fact, the Master System version of Double Dragon uses a Wiffle Ball bat. I mean, I'd believe it. Brazilian overstock Master System. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Okay, let's see. You guys had mentioned this one, so I'll try it out. Oh man, yeah, so... That almost made me think I was gonna play a regular Fantasy Zone game there for a second. So I guess it's like Pac-Man. Touch this spot. Hurry up. Enemies energy. Okay. Okay, so you can kill enemies. Not good. Oh, they make other enemies appear. Okay, I see. Oh, and I probably have to kill these guys a lot like uh, I do in the regular Fantasy Zone games. Oh, it actually looks like I just have to clear the playfield. Okay. Alright, see you, Joshua. Have a good night. Scarlet is a fantasy zone game you've never heard of. Well, now you have. This is interesting. All right, good deal. This is probably the farthest I've ever made it in the game. <laughs> I've never messed around with this one much. It seems like a pretty fun game.
He's like, I definitely want the big wing. Want to take his penguins? Nice. <laughs> Imagine beating that level in under 19 seconds. It seems like impossible. Oh, he's, you get like two seconds to to learn the layout. That's mean. That's it. That's a cool concept, though. I I, I like that. You know. Every time I see these levels, I think I'm going to just play regular Fantasy Zone 1. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I don't know why you'd want anything else other than this. Hey, Brian, welcome. Anyone just joining us? We're playing Fantasy Zone, uh, The Maze. Yeah, Big Wing is 2300 right now, but you need it. Oh, I died. It really is actually a clever concept, now that I think about it, because it does share a lot of the traditional uh, Fantasy Zone mechanics. Like, when you die, you lose the items that you had, and you still have to buy the items, like it's classic Fantasy Zone. Um, but the prices increase, just like the original games. So it's going to cost more and more money just to get, like, the big wing. Uh, Death Seed? Yeah, Master System R-Type is pretty solid. Too bad. Snow plow went by, says Leo. We should check and see if it's still snowing. It 
So I guess there aren't boss levels. Oh, I died again. Jeez, yeah, the big wing is like three grand now. Oh, no. Jeez, that's a lot of enemies. Dope. I can't attack these guys. Yeah, it's game over. Game over, man! Game over! Yeah, so I guess round nine is where things start to get pretty hard, if you're not careful. It's a cool concept, though. After playing a lot of Fantasy Zone 2 tonight, um, it's really interesting trying this. A couple of you guys have mentioned R-Type tonight, and this is another one I played a lot on my channel, but I might as well just fire it up, because it's a good game. So, R-Type is a side-scrolling shoot-em-up, and port of the arcade game by the same name. It's a uh, couple of defining features are... Uh, the charge shot. Normally in the arcade version, you'd have a meter that shows how, you know, how, how charged you, you are. But that's a full shot, basically, a full charge shot. Very powerful. And then, uh, uh, the pod. Or the force pod. So it can absorb bullets. And then, uh, you can also detach it, like this. And it shoots out its own projectile. As you pick up weapons, your pod upgrades. Oops, I was looking at chat. <laughs> Don't chat and fly, folks. Uh, we're not using the FM sound, no. I don't remember if R-Type supports it. It might. Alright, boss time. Mario says it does support the FM sound, okay.
I think I'm gonna switch over to blue for this one. <laughs> Look at all that flicker. Flicker central. Yeah, I mean, it's a decent conversion, uh, given the hardware and whatnot. And they're basically using that, the background layer for that boss. <laughs> That's why that boss isn't flickering, but the, uh, the worm is. This is the battleship level. Yeah, Ronin, uh, our type is an acquired taste. I've always loved the series, but I recognize it's not for everyone. Oh man, the flicker is so bad. This game is a lot more flickery than I remember. So, there's that core in the middle, I have to destroy that. instant kill, just like in the arcade version. <clears throat> Alright, stage four. Uh, interesting level. A lot of enemies coming in, uh, sorry, into the screen from all sides. I'm gonna go 
ahead and use the red weapon. Why did I do that? I had a feeling that was going to happen. You definitely want to stay towards the middle of the screen on this level. I did a diagonal by accident. I got too heavy with the D-pad. Yeah, that's right. Isn't this version supposed to have like an extra level? I've never actually seen that. Back into a spot near the top of the screen. Okay, I'll have to look into that. I've never seen it. It's kind of hard to see their bullets. Yeah, it's like red bullets on a red background.
Nice. Yeah, the Turbo Graphics version was really impressive for the time. Yeah, so this level is where, like, the memorization really kicks in. You absolutely have to have this memorized. That's what I get for not memorizing it correctly. All right, well, this might be our game over spot. <laughs> oh, so lucky. <laughs> Stuck. Uh, there it goes. There we go. to destroy these things, or avoid them. Like that. This next level is a major pain as well. Yeah, the walls explode on this level as well, so you need to stay off the walls. We've got a lot of enemies that come, you know, both forward and backwards. Thank <laughs> you. 
Wow, we did it. We might actually beat this game. Alright, see ya, Mark. Hey, thanks, Ronan. And hey, Fat Shark, welcome back. We are playing... No. <laughs> Master System uh, R-Type. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. So this last boss we get to has a gimmick where you have to release your pod into it. Yeah, that previous level was actually a lot easier in this version than it is in like the Turbo Graphics or uh, arcade version. Right, this is it. That's what I was supposed to do. Or maybe it is. I don't know. I did it again. Why do I... Ugh. Alright, we'll go ahead and try it because we're at the very end. We'll try to finish it. It would have been cool if we did that. We would have gotten ourselves a one credit clear. I don't think I've done that yet on this game. Yeah, I don't remember what to do. If I'm supposed to like throw the pod in right away, or if I just I can wait.
Yeah, you have to wait, then it latches onto your pod. Okay. <sighs> hey, Hamilton? Okay, you don't have to wait for them. You just toss it into his mouth and it does damage to him. Okay. Well, we just beat our type. Now, if I had known that, like, the first time we got there, I would have I would have been able to I'd just get a one credit clear. <laughs> yeah, see, I thought it was something like that, but I, I thought at the end you had to wait for the things, the projectiles to, like, absorb your pod, but no, I was, I was like, going about it wrong. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess this is loop two. It's probably harder. I'm not going to play it, but I'm... I'd be curious to go through it on loop two eventually. There we go. Have I played R-Type Final 2? Uh, yeah. Yeah, actually, I own it. Um, I, I've only beaten it once, though. I need to go back and put a lot more time into it. I, I originally got it on Xbox One, and it didn't really run that well. Um, so, I kind of got discouraged by it. But then I eventually bought it on uh, PS4. And then I also have a Series S now, which runs a, it runs a lot better on that. But, um... Yeah, I need to put more time into it. I backed the Kickstarter, and I waited years and years for it, and then it finally came out, and I just... <laughs> it was uninterested by the time it did. Um... Alright, let's see... Um, well, guys, uh, you know, I think that's probably a good note to end it on, actually. I really do. Uh, there are a lot of other games I want to play, but it's, it's 3 a.m. my time right now. And if I keep going, I'm not going to get to bed till like, 6, and, uh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so... I think what we're going to do is actually, uh, just get out of here. So, yeah, I appreciate you guys hanging out tonight. Um, and, uh, yeah, Patchy, Patchy was here with us. Oh, and actually, one thing I'm going to do real quick uh, before I do this is apparently this does uh, the FM sound, so I want to actually hear how that sounds. So 
So I'll just have that going in the background as uh, as I say goodbye to all you fine folks out there. <laughs> wake up, Patchouli! Wake up! Patchouli, wake up! She's passed out. <laughs> She's out like a light. Oh, man. Yeah. Sounds pretty cool, actually. Fat Shark asks, uh, Fat Shark asks, have I ever played Raptor on PC? He loved that as a kid. Uh, oh yeah, man, that's actually one of my favorite classic MS-DOS games. Uh, I have a full live stream of that game here, by the way, so just go to my channel, search for Raptor if you want to see that. Uh, captured it directly from my, uh, my Windows 95 computer, where I, uh, play a lot of my MS-DOS games. But yeah, um, yeah, Raptor's awesome. I also love uh, Star Gunner, which is from a couple years after Raptor. But um, yeah, both those games are awesome. Raptor is just a—it's a classic. It's not like a super complex game, but it's just—it's one of those games I can just like chill out to. Just really chill out and play that game. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out. I do appreciate it. Um, I'll try to have this archive up tomorrow. Uh, for anyone that jumped in late and you want to catch up on it. Uh, yeah, so stay tuned for that. Uh, want to give some shout outs to some people. We had a bunch of tips tonight, which was awesome. Thank you guys for that. We had a couple of people join up as channel members. And um, speaking of which, let's do that. So I'm trying to play the game, talk, and navigate my YouTube channel page at the same time. <laughs> Thankfully, there's a little bit of uh, dead air in this game. But, um... Let's see. So yeah, huge shoutouts to Raymond Gonzalez, who did the last Super Chat. Uh, Flynn Taggart to Gaming. Uh, Carl. And uh, that's it for Super Chats. But then a uh, huge shout out to uh, Ronnie Webster, who did a, uh, he can join up as a channel member. Cigarette Juice Man, thank you guys for that. And uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps that up. Yeah, the FM sound on this is, uh, it's interesting. The implementation is definitely better than it is in like Double Dragon. Double Dragon sound effects were really bad with the FM sound. But our type seems uh, pretty solid in that regard. Much more pleasant. Yeah, you too, Raymond. Have yourself a good night. Yeah, so this FM soundtrack is uh, its a little more diverse than some of the other FM soundtracks on Master System. It's pretty cool. Yeah, some of the sound effects are a little more appealing. Still has some of your squishy, like generic squishy sounds. <laughs> but the laser is kind of high pitched. It's got a high tone. The uh, the actual music itself is uh, got a lot of like arpeggios, and it, it works well with the FM. Pretty cool. It's so cool playing Master System R-Type with a Super Nintendo controller. <laughs> I almost feel like I'm playing Super R-Type. Hey, you're welcome, Crest Lion. Thanks for thanks for hanging out. Yeah, you guys want bad flicker. It's it's definitely the worst on this second level here. Mm, creepy, eerie music.
Yeah, that sort of like pitch shifted arpeggio is reminds me of some Splatterhouse stuff, actually. Now that I think about it. But, alright guys, that's going to do it for me. So, have yourselves a fantastic day or night, wherever you are in the world. And uh, for myself and Patchy, take it easy. <laughs> My brain's just not working right now. <laughs> Alright guys, I'll see you later. Take care.